but yeah, that guy, so why are you back on I, it? I hit it drunk and it just re amped everything. And then I just wanted one when I was editing, and I got one because I have no self control and I'm a pussy. <laughs> do you want? Do you actually want to quit vaping yeah, or not? That's like a next. I think this the next year I'm gonna make it like one of my goals because once, once I once I defeated that and I was able to do it, like I knew I could do it. And then that made me go into the gym more because I was like, oh, I feel great about myself. And then I started getting in the gym more, felt good about myself, and then um, started doing that again. And like, it just didn't even think about it and just back to where I was. But I know I can do it because I've developed my self control and my inner will. But, but you just said, sorry, sorry, I hate to you just said you're a counteract that. You just said 30 I was, seconds ago you were I was, I was. Well, you still are. Well, no, but you still yeah. are. Wouldn't you technically you still be? You always will be until you stop vaping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to be that guy, but like, is this how we're starting? This? No, yeah. no, no, I mean, no, I mean, dude. Fuck well, no, that. well, no, and this is a good. I think there's a lot of people, especially our viewers, that like that definitely vape and I don't wouldn't want, want my to quit. Family know me knowing I vape. Wait, your family doesn't know? No. Does your family listen to the podcast? Probably not, but maybe. So, there you go. Perfect. But don't you think Fuck. this would be good, like a good like opening point to be like, hey, yeah, like I, yeah, I definitely should stop vaping. It's a dumb thing that I got into, and it's not cool just fucking addicting so like I, I would definitely agree it's definitely like, not cool honestly like when i quit for a while you felt cooler no but i saw people that would hit it and i'm just like it's gross it is gross and like i just thought like loser. wow what a loser yeah like literally i literally thought like that's so gay it's <laughs> i think it's worse if like i both a girl or guy but a, it's just a you're sucking on it you know it's, it's just, like yeah. just a sus act in its, it's own like, like i think like, it's worse for girls it's more of a turnoff for girls but it's. I think Man, it's more. Man, that was so dark. Yeah, like I think just, what you just did right there is a great example. Like, <laughs> like that's like, duh. and there might be like fucking high schoolers that are like, like doing these cool things in class, like fucking no, James no one's does, man. in class, bro. In no, high school, definitely. definitely. No yeah. chance. Nowadays, yeah. You don't think? I mean, kids did it in my day, but like you got caught. Like, yeah, you, you think kids caught. nowadays give a fuck? See, the probably thing more is, fucking I never vulgar. vaped until I got into college. Mm. Like, I never did it all of high school. Really? So, yeah. Like, I was pretty good in high school for everything. What got you drinking. on it? Well, what, was it just, like, social? Well, like, COVID hit, and there was nothing to do. So, like, everyone was just trying shit, you know? It was like, <laughs> you're so bored. Like, the world literally didn't care what the fuck you did yeah. as long as you didn't have too many people in your room. So, like, for example, my room checks, I had, like, two fifths, just, every, like, beer cans everywhere and my room check passed with two fifths on the paper like check pass and they, they only gave a fuck that year about like having visitors and shit it was fucked so that's when you've decided i'm gonna yeah but like it. my friends yeah in college like it's just like a group like thing. yeah everyone was doing it and i was just drunk and i was like fuck it i'm gonna join in yeah looking back would you say that might have been a regret or yeah no? definitely yeah definitely it's like yeah, you develop like a craving for it. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to stop to like also amplify your like gym game too. Stop vaping. Yeah. Well, why would you say that? I think my gym think game you is get tired too quick. No, it's not because I'm yeah, breathing, is. dude. It's because my muscle fatigue. No, it's breathing. No, dude, I can go on the treadmill from and the run. Oxygen that you have in your body. <sighs> this, this sucks. <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't expect to get like just fucking uh, penetrated. No, no, right no. Now. I'm not trying to, we're not trying to bend What's you over. What's this called? Is this, this like is, an intervention? Yeah. No. Like, this Bro, is, this is 100% an intervention. This is a nice way, an intervention though. Like a solid intervention. Like I'm not doing crack, bro. Like No, no, and nicotine. I agree. Yeah, yeah no, man. and I, I agree. Just, it's a gateway drug, right? Like maybe you next tomorrow never you'll be doing had, crack. Nicotine <laughs> was never called a gateway drug. <laughs> never. Maybe we'll be doing Marijuana crack like the peace people in uh, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Speaking of Austin, Texas. Good segue. Is that what you meant to do there? Well, now it's just blown away. Like every time someone makes a good segue on this show, you just like, oh, that was a good segue. But I think that ew, I liked it. Dude, good fucking transition. There. I'm about that though. I point out I liked it. I liked it too. Did you like Austin? I, I actually did. I actually liked Austin a lot. Really? I did. Yeah. Like I thought it was a cool city area. And like, I really think what brought it for me, like the excitement was the game day and the actual game. Yeah. Because like we haven't had that in so long. Yeah. In a good game with energy, culture, you know, unique chance, like people there the whole game. And I think that was probably like what bumped it up for me. But like the two bar nights, obviously, we can get into that. They didn't impress me too much. Um, but there is lots of bars. 
Yeah, that's the another street good thing. itself was insane. Like insane. Sixth street lived up to the hype, I'd say. I don't yeah. even think we saw all of it. And then on top of that, I think Austin as a city definitely was underwhelming in the sense of like, I thought it'd be way bigger. So did I. Being like the yeah. capital of like one of the largest states in the states is was pretty underwhelming like very like minimal like infrastructure not many big buildings everything around the city was like pretty run down yeah. um but it is america's number one growing city fastest growing city, fastest yeah. growing city. they say like the guy was telling me like three thousand a month for moving there about damn like average so like if you just think about that like it's gonna in like five five years like Obviously, like you expect it to grow, but can't keep its hopes up, you know? Yeah, so, I, would ex- I would hope it like. Yeah. It's also like Florida, like the state, the, the capital city of Florida is like Tallahassee. Like that's a P <laughs> if you think about that, that's a piece of shit fucking terrible. That's a rundown. Yeah, but no there. one's like, yo, I'm moving to ta- like that's Tallahassee. True. Yeah, like, just, that, that's fair. It's like, everyone, yo, like Tally's the next like, spot. Major stuff. corporations have moved to Austin and, it, and it's like, so that's why I thought it'd be way better bigger and yeah. like yeah. in, in terms of like business wise than it was like we drove downtown through the middle of downtown during the day on a weekday and there was like no one out and about no one like coffee shops that, were slammed though coffee shops were slammed but like <laughs> yeah. if you're doing that in toronto like you're seeing like people walking around in suits but yeah. like new york like that shit's fucking popping yeah, yeah that's that fair. In, like in miami it's or not a major, major city. city it's not a major city i know it's not i just thought it would be yeah okay that's fair yeah, I don't know. I I really liked Austin though for some reason. Like I know it wasn't like anything blown away out of the waters, um, like shocking factor. But for some reason, when we were there, like it just felt like it felt fun. Like I, I, everything felt like a vibe. You know I what think I mean? It was, I think it was the weekend. I think what made the like because I agree in the sense of Austin itself was super fucking hyped up, and it yeah. was like. Certain areas we were East Austin kind of sketch like and everywhere yeah. every city's gonna have their sketch area and nice areas It was a little more sketch than I would have liked in all honesty city like change said during midweek Wasn't phenomenal, but I think we had our boys David and Pierre come down for the weekend yeah, really fun It was a great weekend. We <laughs> yeah. just had it was one of those weekends that you had circled on the calendar And I on top of the fact that it's like Texas football like this yeah. was gonna be the one school That's like you could say arguably pushing Alabama Florida State, sure. LSU, Penn State in the sense of like the game day is going to be good. Sixth Street's one of the best bar streets in the nation, which it is. And then they got a solid Greek life there yeah. too. And they're moving to the SEC, which to be honest, they should be. That's yeah, another reminder. 100%. I got the similar vibe of like Oklahoma in the sense that that was way better than a Big 12 school. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Like if we're there, especially that game day, that's an SEC game day. Yes. It was electric. Hands down. Um, but we should start maybe Friday with what we did when Dave and Pierre, they came, we picked them up Friday morning at the airport. I kind of got in beef. We didn't get in beef with like the airport security <laughs> guy, but like we wanted to film a bit picking them up and we're parked like when you go to airport and you're like winning the departures to, or the arrivals to pick people up, you just pull off to the side and guy comes up, gives us a warning saying, Hey, you guys got to go. We're like, Oh, they just got off like two minutes. You know what I mean? We, he sees we have a camera, uh, comes back, man, a minute and a half later, like maybe two minutes later with like another security guard and they're like writing something up, like about to write us a, write us a, ticket. a ticket. And then we're like, fuck, all right, man, we're gonna, we're gotta go now. Every- and as we get in the car, he like tells the guy that came over, he's like, I told him 10 minutes ago, get out of here, you didn't listen to me. You have, what did he say? He had a line, you have no dignity or something, no, uh, fuck, respect? Not, not no. respect, no, there's a word that it's gonna piss me um, off. You have no dignity. I don't know if it's dignity, dignity but dignity. no dignity. Yeah, you got no. Maybe starts with an A, maybe. Uh, like awareness. No, it, it was something that just hits you like personally. He attacked me as if I lied. He made it seem like he told us ten minutes ago. He told us literally a minute and a half ago, and then Buddy comes writing a ticket and he tries to make it seem like like I disrespected him. Like, dude, we're like ten fucking minutes. It was and a minute to, and a half ago, dude. and it wasn't even packed, bro. Like there was nobody bro. waiting for like spots. There Honestly, wasn't, most airports get like double like the curb and then you're you have cars by the curb and then you have another lane of cars because of how packed it is you, and there was no second lane of cars like we were completely fine nobody waited fine you know what i learned about society like when you grow up in high school like or in a- any school like elementary school you have these kids that follow the rules to a t they're the teacher's pets and they they bug the fuck out of you and tell you all this shit and do all this shit and do this and this and that and they're just annoying as fuck people that are have to stick up their ass. I've come to find out like high school, schooling, society works out in the same ways. And those people just get random jobs. 
and you run into those fuckers every once in a while. But in school, you know, you just look at them and kind of laugh. And, like, even the teacher's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, chill. Like, I say that because I'm the teacher. Like, I don't need you being my, like, army officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, those are the type of people I just say fuck off to. It's you know? the kind of thing where it's, like... People put on a badge or fucking get a whistle and think they have, like, the... Yeah. The power to do whatever the fuck they want. And I get it. Do your and job. Just put common sense out of the way and just follow the rules, like, so strictly. Like, dude, fucking relax. But he, like, pointed. Like, he fucking pointed at me and, like, straight in my soul, like, I said that, that to me. I know that pissed you off. And I'm, in the, and I'm, like, in the car now, window down. I was, like... Fuck you! Like I was so mad. I was. I don't know why I let this shit get to me. I don't know why. Like we stopped like recording. We were. We, it would have been such a good bit if like we actually got recorded. that on camera. Yeah. Guy like puts the camera down, starts like fucking arguing him back at him. Uh, I, I I I let it get to me, and I was just, I was just mad because like he. I know he lied. I know he over exaggerated well, yeah. that ten fucking minutes, 100%. and it was like just because his fucking I don't know his buddy fucking came by writing a ticket. It's like trying to act bigger than what he is. It's like. Fuck you, man. Do you think that they would have stopped you and did all that if you didn't have a camera? Yeah. Yeah, I think he still yeah, would have. Just It was more so just because like his... I don't know if it was a guy higher above than him writing up the ticket, but he was trying to show I told him 10 minutes ago and he still didn't leave, like, get him type thing. Like, suck me. Suck my dick, man. Like, Wait, what, the what are you supposed with? to do if you show up, like, five minutes early to picking you up your friend? You fucking do loops, bro. That's... You, might be we had to come all the way heard. around and they were we already to there. to do loops. And then we... As we pull off to do our fucking loop... We get a like they Pierre texts us being like yeah we're like we're here and we're like what the fuck right as like literally thirty seconds later and we had shotguns in the back right <laughs> not fucking guns <laughs> <laughs> beers in already like ready to go like shotgunned yeah. um just chilling in the back seat like opened but yeah. like sitting up so like it wouldn't spill and now we're forced to drive around as we get to like towards back and like finish the loop into them one of beers fucking spills over. Mm. And hit, like we hit a bump, start spilling over, and I'm like, oh my god! Like this all could have been avoided, but he just fucking Wasn't gave a us dick. ten more seconds. Yeah, or just like fucking no one's behind us, man. Yeah. Take it easy, you know. Like just yeah. relax a little bit. But anyways, um, we get out of there. We pick up Dave and uh, Dave and Pierre, and you get to connect to Big Shadow Jordan to Big Fox noon kickoff. There was the noon game of the week. It was the noon game of the week. Big, yeah. I believe like Big Fox new it's game like, of the week, yeah. uh, Texas and Kansas State. So there was a whole meet and greet, and they told us to come through guys like Mark Ingram, uh, Matt Leinart, uh, big guys that are on the panel, and who else was there? Uh, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer was there too. That was pretty cool. I wish we met him because like I yeah, watched the documentary was, and yeah, I really cool. wanted to meet him, but it yeah. was fine. As a uh, Michigan guy, I didn't really like. I probably would have went up to him with my phone and been like, "Go blue, fuck you." Yeah, right. No chance. Nah, no chance. <laughs> no, <laughs> no fucking chance. chance man. I've been like, "It's an honor to meet you, sir." What the fuck? <laughs> no, uh, just after watching the Untold Netflix series about the Gators, yeah. I was like, just I was kind of starstruck a little bit. Like, sure. damn, that's pretty cool. But Jordan says, "Hey, it's a meet and greet. Come through, meet the team, meet the people, and uh, we'll get ready for the game day on Saturday." And we kind of thought it was when he said meet and greet. I guess there's going to be fans there, people asking pictures, just kind of a cool atmosphere. We get there and we realize it's like a, you know, film your content with Ingram, Matt Liner, all these guys. What do you guys have prep? We show up. We're like, holy shit. We thought we were going to be saying hi to people. This is not what this is. Chanchi comes with a couple really good ideas. We end up doing the intro. Am I allowed to, should I say this? We end up doing the Buzzing Across America intro for UT with Mark Ingram. That was pretty dope. <laughs> Um, Yo, th my name's uh, or you're like this is the boys in <laughs> is buzzing across my ears. My boy Mark Ingram. Yeah, he was loving it, dude. He was that was pretty yeah, sick. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad my boy was there. I got some nice flicks of you guys. I know, dude. Can you yeah. send that to me? Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, cool. I'll uh, I'll pull him off today. Word. And then after that, met Matt Liner, uh, infamous U uh, USC quarterback, nail. absolute nail. nail. Like, apparently played with like. Um, fuck, I'm gonna. I might butcher this. That's okay. But one of a really good wide receiver, like Jerry Rice or some shit. Uh, you might have been one of the uh, fact I'll check. Yeah, fact up, check. But, but we can... end up we end up meeting him. So at first it's just like a vlog bit. We're talking about him, telling him what we do, what we're about. He's super interested. He even says like USC uh party life's not it's it. Like, they got the sucks. one bar nino, which we knew, but he even said like it's not it compared to these other these other schools. And we start talking about, you know, what he's been doing with Big Noon Fox, all the different tailgates they've gone to. He's vibing with it. And then we end up doing a little challenge, a one on one where Linar throws a post to Chianchi. So it was me and him and we we went a couple routes. Pretty cool. Honestly, What's really it? cool experience. He would love the camera. Loved he the was camera, about it. And bro. I think and I think why they, you know, liked it was just because a lot of the people that were coming and filming the content for this meet and greet were more so like, I guess, UT, like spirit squads, different clubs and groups. That Fans get to, more like. Yeah, they get to ask some questions, but it's very like, 
generic type stuff in the sense, but when we showed up and we actually had, I mean, it was last minute. I wish we planned more, but it was, we yeah. had some planned bits that were fun and interactive that they fucked with. That was a little different for them. So that was super cool. You know, meeting them, honestly, that was pretty sweet. Yeah. And then after that, we end up going to shoot guns. Cause I want to just touch sure, on the sure. last thing. I, I think it was really cool. And like, shout out to them that they were able to deal with it all. Cause like there was constantly getting pulled left and right. Like, you know, Linart or the line art was, you know, we were about to do our bit and then he got pulled away from the social media person, had to talk to like Bro. four different groups. We didn't talk to him for like 30 minutes. And then he came back to us like, yeah, you want to like, let's do this. I was sorry. I had to go, you know, and do all that. But like, that's a lot to deal with. They talked to probably like a hundred different Bro. people in 30 minutes. That's like, uh, they might've been there longer, like two hours of oh, yeah. nonstop getting legit pulled talk to this person film with this person do this do that do that do that you just got to make it easy for them they're yeah. doing they're fucking doing a lot and i respect the fuck out of them yeah. guys in media i don't think get enough credit on just like i think people like just shrug off like guys doing media and stuff like that those guys are just non-stop talking to people yeah. doing shit you just want to make it easy for them want to make it fun and i think the liner bit was good because it was like that was fun for him you know what i mean it's like i can just i just He's get a quarterback yeah, yeah i just yeah. get to play hang out with the boys yeah shoot the shit it was like not something where they're just asking a generic yeah. question who's he, winning this weekend what's the prediction like yeah. guy literally does that for his job you yeah. know what i mean you want to do something fun um so yeah i completely respect yeah. the fuck out of and just the whole group getting yeah. it organized big shout out jordan glacier media a lot going on you know what i mean you have tons of people coming in keep it fucking you know, going according to plan. So I respect them a ton. Then after that, we end up going shooting guns with Dave and Pierre. They've never shot a gun before. We have. You've been you've been growing up shooting guns. Zab, do you want to give yeah. your background on the gun shooting for you? I mean, like it's nothing like crazy <laughs> compared to most Americans. But uh, I went hunting like with my dad when I was younger. So nice. I was shooting at a young age. Um, my friends have guns up north, so we shoot up there all the time. And yeah, it's like pretty, pretty like normal for me. Mm. I would say like, it's exciting and shit. But obviously, I think like you guys had. A lot more fun yeah, than I did because it was like it's you've been doing yeah, it. Yeah, like I I went through and I did a round on the the AR and then I did a round. I didn't do a round on the pistol because you. But I, yeah. yeah, so like yeah, it was it was cool. It's fun, but yeah, I've been doing it most of my life, and I would say I did it a lot more when I was younger than when I grew up doing sports and stuff. I didn't really hunt a ton, so. But yeah, it's like something I experienced as a kid almost. Yeah. So yeah, have you shot an animal? I have. I used to go to squirrel hunting with my dad. You use um bullet or a pellet guns on that so like you, a bb gun it, no. uh probably kind of yeah like a bb gun yeah. okay word so like it's just metal bullets yeah like pellets and then you just shoot squirrels that was like my big thing because you could always like go <laughs> squirrel hunting bro it's so fun they just like sit there like and then poof, gone off the tree that's fun. holy <laughs> fuck. that's it's crazy the difference in just like you know, us being Canadian, like, yeah. and you're Michigan, like, we're not, yeah. Toronto, Michigan's not far at all, like, a couple hour drive, and, like, you you casually go, like, squirrel hunting, and me and him are like, well, yeah, fuck, I no think idea. when you stayed with me, right, like, my dad will wake up uh, in the spring, early spring, I think, when you went over for Easter at my mm -hmm. house, and we get up, and we get, you guys come out of the basement, my dad's just out the back porch with a pellet gun, just, like, beaming down birds, because they shit all over our deck. <laughs> Wait, so, are like, you allowed to do that? I don't know, but I don't like, think you're allowed to just do that. I, well, like they're like the sh the shitty blackbirds that just come <laughs> in and like fucking shit all over our deck and shit, and they just make they make nests in these like trees that we have blocking our pool area. So like he just wants to get rid of them because yeah yeah I mean put matters in your own take matters in your own hands right yeah, I guess yeah. but then, but like uh you guys woke up and you thought he had an actual sniper out and like just casually shoot and you're like dude what the fuck is America man? dude <laughs> it was just one of those things like you don't. <laughs> You you don't expect it until you like actually see it live. Like guys just casually carrying out a, a gun of some sort, and you're like, the fuck? Like what? Usually our parents just got a coffee at the table. This guy's got a fucking gun in a mug. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that it was just so American. It's such an American sight. Yeah. Um. But yeah, me and Chanchi one time we went shooting last year in Pittsburgh. Sniper, shotguns, some pistols, AR. So that was but, like, cool. That was really fun. So we've only gone shooting once. Um. So for us, you know, bringing Pierre and Dave or Pierre and Dave, Pierre really loves that shit really wanted yeah. to do one dave was kind of scared you can tell dave oh, yeah. was like sweating at the forehead a little bit like shitting his pants like he didn't i don't think he expected we were gonna go shooting right and he was like what the fuck's going on yeah. kind of out of his comfort zone a little bit 100%. dave because he's like you know more quiet shy yeah. like i don't want to hold a gun i'm gonna fuck something up but ton of fun really we had the ar do you remember what kind of ar guns we were shooting change no idea ar and pistol silence pistol pistols suck yeah well it's because the, they had the suppressor on it i don't know why that shit's so heavy. That's why it was going like up, like mm. for you guys. Like if you had it like 
closer, you can keep it more like compact and then like just squeeze to yourself. Hmm. And then when you like squeeze it in, not just pull the trigger, like if you actually like take it and squeeze it with your hand, you get more control. It's like, poof, poof, and it won't move. Hmm. But that suppressor is so heavy. I don't know why they gave us that when it was our first time shooting. I don't know. I was chilling. Oh, you would like you like which one do you like better? The pistol, Obviously, the AR. Like fucking AR. Dude, the yeah. AR was so sick. sick. The red dot and everything was sick. So Your sick. accuracy was insane, yeah. dude. He was hitting like we had this dinosaur like paper that was you can use to just pipe and that different targets and points. Zaps was I was all around it. All around the middle of the dinosaur and then the claw was at the top or the head. I hit the head. The head yeah. of the dinosaur, just like right around it. The it was hundred mark. Yeah. And he was farther. And Zaps went farther than uh Dave and I just sick accuracy that's Thank you. that's tough because i feel like i'm right there and then you shoot it and it's like you were just off by a bit you know yeah, what i mean i get it's, it's what like, is it give some tips recoil. i think it's like the closest or the thing that i got taught was like always like keep it like in and like when you when you're like I, you have to have your whole body into it so it's not just like pressing the trigger and reacting to it it's like my front arm and like everything was in mo in like unison so when i shot it like i knew everything was going to move so like i i kind of like forecast that you just movement. have to be strong like you have to be flexing yeah but like also like sturdy hold it firm yeah sturdy. like you have to it, it, you should go straight back yeah, not and you want it to be up, like down basically attached to your straight body. back yeah yeah oh. it's like it's just supposed to be squeeze boom 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 yeah. ah okay remember when we went shooting you kept missing the fucking target the sniping yeah. <laughs> i couldn't i was I so bad for shit, i couldn't hit a snipe the sniper was so uh, it was fucking was it windy no, no, I just couldn't. I was we're just in like a deep forest. Like there's no way. Yeah, middle Damn. fucking middle of Pennsylvania. God knows where we were, but I just I couldn't do the sniper. I'm more of like AR shotgun guy. Shotguns are easier because they just fucking squirts everywhere. Yeah, but like miss. I like the AR because I'm big red dot guy. And when the I was playing dot COD, was when sick. I was playing, was it a smiley face? Yeah, they had I think that it was in Black a, Ops One. No, I don't think it was a smiley face. Oh, was not, it, was it what was the, the design? Range? What was the design? It was a dot with just a circle. A dot. Ah, I thought it was a smiley face. No, that's maybe like I'm Call of Duty say. One custom yeah. scope. Yeah, yeah, it was just like I liked it because it. I, I thought that was fun because I was a big red dot guy, like just playing COD. So I was like, oh, that was sick, and I had more fun shooting it. Reloading the AR is way easier. The pistols, like, just fucking like it just sucked. The pistol yeah. was not as fun, but overall shooting was a dope time. The boys had fun. Um, and then Friday night, our first time going out for Sixth Street, which people, the people that don't know, Austin has a lot of people have said one of the best bar lives in the country. It's called Sixth Street. Broken up into multiple parts. They have Dirty Six, West Six. One of them, I think Dirty or West is more sketch. No, dirty we is. Dirty. dirty is sketch as fuck. Kind of, you don't want to be around those areas and get dangerous apparently, at night. Apparently, though, we should have went. People are saying we should have went to Dirty Six. Yeah. Really? Yeah, apparently it's like way better for content, more people out and about. Yeah, it, I, might have, it might have like a little bit of a younger crowd. But like after, yeah, thinking about it a bit more as well, it was like that is where all the college crowd would go if they're not 21. That's and like even that, squad was there. They're out there. Yeah. In um, Dirty Six? Yeah, on Friday night or something. Oh, damn. Yeah, that guy, uh, what's his name? Matt King. No. He didn't tell us though. Yeah, we saw Matt King at Fox Noon. But um, the guy that was friends with Max that we went to his apartment after was telling me, like, yeah, we saw him out at, like, 36. Like, we just saw, like, David Dobrik, um, you know, like, all the guys, like, Zane. What were they doing? Uh, no idea. Literally no idea. But Damn. They were at 36. That's and they, pretty They fucked. were, like, saying how they were, like, shocked by that. Like, but, yeah, like, I don't know why they were out there, but. But like it seemed like that was the move. That is fuck. the content move. That really. is talk. Yeah, we went. We ended up going to West. It, there's three parts. I'm pretty sure there's 36 West, and I'm butchering the name of the third. But it's just east. a maybe East actually. Yeah, it might be East. I can't remember. But uh, Dirty and West were the like main spots. It was just like a long street of just bars. Really, like almost a stupid fucking amount of of bars we go at the friday night keep in mind saturday we got an 11 a.m game because we're central time which we also fucked up on that's a whole other yeah. story but we go out to concrete cowboy friday night and i'm be honest it was dead there was no one there there was no one there and it yeah. was kind of i was kind of worried because we show up and i'm like oh fuck this is bad well we literally said like chanchi like walked like looked in and turned around and we're like like Pierre and all of them were like, yeah, yeah, let's go to another place. Like, yeah, let's just fuck Bro, off. Got in, got our alcohol, and we just we ended up just going somewhere else. Do you know where we did we go to Parlor? Buford. Buford. Buford's. Buford's. People did say Buford's was a really good spot. And we kind of just we kind of just let the night take over. And I'm gonna be honest, 
I got pretty fucked up yeah. to the point where I was yakking in the morning. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. I blew chunks in the morning, and then yeah. I blew chunks Sunday morning. I had a bad weekend. Saturday morning Fuck. and Sunday morning, I was I was yakking. But Saturday, um, Buford's cool layout. It has like an upstairs, upstairs bars where you can get drinks, and they kind of over overlay like the dance floor on the bottom. Seat. Which has got like a stage where the DJ is, and you can get on the stage. That was anyone can just hop on, yeah. have fun. Um, good time. What did you guys think of Buford? That the, is supposed to be layout, one of the better spots. The layout reminded me a lot of the bar in Muskoka, like kind of, yeah, like in that balcony sense it did. with the look down on the on the stage, the and, key, yeah, 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 yeah. And like that whole vibe, I think is just super sick because even when you're on the stage and you're looking up, it's a full crowd, and then you also have a balcony you're looking up on that's full with bars up there. Yeah. So it's like just a cool environment where I was like. I was like drinking and I was just vibing. I'd look around and it seemed like everyone was having a good time. It was open. Yeah. And I could move around. Yes. Yeah, there was, was also like another area upstairs um, that was kind of like secluded and it was like kind of like a smaller like bar ish type mm -hmm. vibe. Like low light, like little yeah, candles. Rooftop kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. that, that was, there was like. Oh, is that where we ended the there. night? That's yeah. where is we that took where our we, picture on that's, the couch. That's when it gets blurry. I don't know if I had a drink there. I We got the pictures from Daryl who took pics for us this weekend. I was like. Where is this? I I don't really remember that couch part. I maybe we had a drink at the fucking like the dance floor, and I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember that that part of the night. That's when it got weird. Pretty blurry, but I yeah. think I was okay, right? Yeah, I had an okay night. I just went home, went to bed, right? No, <laughs> you were fucking laying on the bathroom floor again. I, oh yes, I fell asleep <laughs> with the paper towel for my head. Why do you do? What the hell goes on with you when you get ham? What's going on? Okay, sometimes like the ground's just cold. And I want to just lay down in the cold. You do heat up a lot. Like, you fucking I sweat. sweat. I sweat when I'm drunk, bro. Like, like bullets. Like, I'm running a marathon type shit. Like, I'm sitting in a sauna. So, like, when I wake up and I'm hammered, I always wake up just in my own sweat. It's terrible. It's disgusting. So, you just, like, can you show? Can you tell the people what do you do when you, like, come home? And you're sweating. Um, you go on the floor and you just, like. Well, usually I, I kind of, I'm chilling for a bit. And then when you, like, settle down and everyone's, like, just sitting. Then, like, my mind is still going, like, 100 miles an hour, but, like, I'm just got to chill. So then I start getting hot because, like, I have nowhere to put that energy. Like, I just start sweating. I don't know. I just, like, start pulsing. Then I'm, like, I got to go lay down. I lay down in bed. I feel like shit, so I go lay on the cold floor. Way better. That's my thought process. And also a downward dog <laughs> yoga position. <laughs> that's I, kind of that's sus, like my, no? it's It's a yoga position that's <laughs> sus, but the yoga position helps me feel better. So. It's like fetal position almost. Like you're like curled up, like lying. Yeah, like face down, you know, like I'm bent over my knees. Yeah, face down, knees ass up. My you're kind of doing a face down, ass up. Yeah, that's exactly what it yep. is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. But it helps me. And nice. I don't yak. So Nice. Yeah, so we got home super fucking late that night. Had some food. I think we had the leftover barbecue Leftover that barb. Night. Yep. Was gas. Gas. Um, and then we don't end up going to bed till like 3, 4 in the morning. And it's an early game day Sunday. And we knew this would happen. But we don't usually have something planned for 7.30 in the morning. Right. And we did have um, something planned with Fox and Jordan Glacier Marketing. And we were going to be going up against a... Um, Olympics food? TikToker I don't think it was Olympian, oh. but a TikToker from UT um, in a bull riding competition I think she does like horseback riding so yeah like we would have gotten fucked yeah we would have gotten embarrassed torched. embarrassed and this was gonna be like a bit a pre-planned bit on Fox so I wake up to calls from Jordan at 7 like 20 like <sighs> three calls and I'm like oh my god no way I fucking because I hate like you when you plan like it'd be one thing if like it was just a group like us you know and we're like let's you know get to the tailgate for eight it's like whatever if you get there for nine but if like someone's waiting on you at seven thirty and on top of that it's like with a network <laughs> that we, is expecting us to be there yeah and we fuck I wake up to the calls and I'm like fuck me like there's hundred percent no chance that we get up and get ready six guys and leave and get their own time so I'm like I just text them like bro I'm so fucking sorry. We are not going to make it. There's no way we get everyone ready and there in time for 730. And then we start, like, I think we sleep a little bit longer, get up around, like, 839. And we're like, okay, like, this is a decent time. The game's at 12. And then I'm, like, thinking, I'm like, wait, the game's at fucking 11. Yeah, I, I think I said something. I think you came up and I was like, yo, game's at 11. And Or does that? Is I that was like, yo, we have... 
we'll be i think i was like yeah we'll be we'll be good like you could get interviews still like still have like an yeah. hour where, and you're like the game's at 11 i'm like wait what yeah the, the it's big 12 noon est and then i realized i was like wait we're central and i remember searching it up and i was like the and I knew no one knew either. All, like the wor- no one knew. Ever. No one and then knew. It, now it's like nine o'clock, and that's a huge difference between a noon that, game and an eleven yes. a.m. game. And yes. It's like because na- we have to still eat. Which did we even end up? NFS. Eating? No, no, it was no. An NFS. NFS. No NFS. food Saturday. It was a no food Saturday. Love that. Brought some champagne. Got in the car, and then we get there for like what ten o'clock? Ten. Which no, is 10 not bad. Which is to be hour. honest, like, still not enough. To, you need at least two hours. For a solid tailgate time, yeah. two, two and a half, yeah. Especially on a big game day like that because people start going into the game early. Early, yeah. And we got there and Fox Big Noon was kind of like dying out. It was dying out. Um, And then the tailgate itself was dying out. Like we got in and people were kind of like walking out kind of thing. Yeah. We got a good amount of time in, but, you know, I think two hours is necessary. And I think Prime would be like three hours for a tailgate. Yeah, I would agree. I think three, like... And I think it just comes down to time. I think if you have that 11 a.m. game day, the frat guys, it's a guy said it best when I was, when we did the tour after they're like, yeah, man, like what time do you think girls are actually going to get there at? Probably like 10, what girl, nine to nine 30, maybe a couple, but like no, no girls are going to be there. No girls are there. No guys are going to be there. Then we just have an empty tailgate. Like it's just, it's just kind of math. You're prime tailgate, math. prime game time. I don't know why they put such good games so early. What are we doing? Why? I don't want, why can't we make them a 3.30? Or 3.30, you can go on a Friday, get to the tailgate by noon. One even, you have two and a half hours. I don't know why, like why we want to make it so horny for noon. It, it kind of forces people to stay in on the Friday, which is not the move. Not the move. It's not yeah. the move. And then it also makes the Saturday night worse too, I think. Because it's a long day. Everyone woke up so early yeah. and then you get home and you're like, okay, let me sleep for a bit. And then half the people that go to sleep are not going out. Like, just, yes. Like, also, oh, I'd yeah. rather just stay in. Stay it doesn't in. make any sense because even as a kid when I grew up and my family had season tickets at Michigan, like if we, I would go to the home opener every year with my dad and it'd be a 12 o'clock game. We leave our house. You have to take it like in account visitors that are traveling to these games. Yeah. I drove like two and a half hours at five in the morning every single Saturday. <laughs> like, bro, like, what are we doing? I'll leave at 12, get there two o'clock for a three o'clock game. That'd be best. Yeah, and then you're not like, there's no way you stay up until two. No shot. <laughs> no, no chance. No chance. Fuck. And if you do, you have no energy. So the night is just like not um, as good. Just people yeah. standing there. It's Especially like zombies. If, yeah. And if yeah. you're traveling for the game, it's like you don't have like a, a place to go to midway to like take a nap or something or like refuel yeah. but on top of that like even if you do have a place a nap is not the move like for you me ha- it's the move for me it's the move no dude it's for not, you like, maybe not you lose so much energy it's like the vibe's just gone and it's so hard to get it back because you're not fully rested you took a nap and like yeah you like feel a little bit better but it's like now your buzz is off now you got to fully redrink and then the second time drinking never hits the same as the first time drinking so you don't even i don't even get drunk that's true i never thought about when you take that long break get food rest up and then when you start drinking again it doesn't hit the same it's almost like I don't, you're, you don't want you it. You don't want you it. Don't, no. Let me be honest. It's, you don't want it. Or you're forcing it down. Like, yeah, you're literally and then it forcing doesn't it. hit the same. Like, yeah. I don't it's know, like dude. A, Saturday, like, Saturday night. No, I still got fucked. I, I still got fucked, but it was more well, so, we like. were also, like, that was a different, we, we pre-gamed that, like, well. We did well, at like the dinner. sit down for two hours just drinking. Forcing ourselves to drink. And also, it Yeah, we did go to the dinner, and that was pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Oh, I'm wrong. So I do agree. I think, and that's why I'm starting to honestly think those 6.30, those night games are probably the best game days because you can tailgate. You can set a tailgate for three or four if the game's at 7 or 6.30. So you get two and a half, three hours, solid tailgating time. You can sleep in. You can, Dude, you can go to the gym, sleep the fuck in all before tailgating. So you like start your regular day, tailgate, game, go right to the bars. It's yep. there and you don't have to stop. There never needs to be any sense of stopping and you have enough energy because you started at four or three and yeah. it's a, like, and then you know that everybody's going to the bars. It's not yeah. like a question of like, no question. Oh, like, do you think it's going to be like busy tonight or like, yeah. Oh, like, are these people going out or like, um, I'll just stay in and then Confirmed. Like, 
But like a six, a night game, which I'm excited because this weekend at TCU versus night Texas game. is a night game. Night game. Everyone will slowly start making their way to the bars. Like whether they leave at halftime and it's a bad game, they go to the bars. Whether they leave in the third quarter, it's a bad game, whatever. Or it's a tight game and everyone stays to the end. Everyone directly after the game is going to the bars. And everyone knows that everyone is going to the bars because there's no in-between moment and then questioning of like what's going on. So true. So true. Yeah. I agree. I do like that take. I think, and I, but in my opinion, so I like night games for that purpose, but I think the best tailgating like game day is a 3 30 because i like starting around noon because it's almost like there might be too much time for like before the tailgate at three if that makes sense like i kind of i'm okay with the game ending at 6 30 going for like a dinner for like an hour hour and a half I then like going bar so whether it's a 3 30 or 6 30 i'm good with either or if that makes sense yeah, yeah. um but anyways let's talk about the game day so we sleep in we get there we do our shit a very um, what's it? first of all, best game day, hands down on this tour, blew it out the water, 100%. every aspect of it, but the vibe of the school and, and everyone coming together, that marching band heading into like, I don't even know where they went heading into the stadium. We, into the stadium. Low key. I like, we joined I wish it. We kind of tried to like, just walk in with them. I feel like we could have. We definitely could have. We, yeah. Cause we had the cameras and everything. And we were right behind them. No one was stopping us. No one. No, like we were just waving at people. Like, oh, yeah, we just doing this parade. and shit. I think yeah, if you just do so this. so funny, dude. dude if you just like, do this. Filming us, bro. Bro. Like, I think you just got to like do the hook em thing and the horns up and they like, yep. Like they were like, wait, it's like a signal of like, yeah, I'm gonna walk through. Yep, yep, yep. Like you just get, you just toss them a little fucking it's like a bat signal. Yeah, it's like, who, who are you? Okay, yeah, let him in. Like, you don't even have to do anything. You don't. You don't have to be anyone. You're wearing Longhorn gear and you have a camera and you go like this. You can get in anywhere. Anywhere. It's like a media pass. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> everyone loves it. Like they're taking pictures. They're like waving and shit. Like, bro, like even like on the um when I was at the corner of the game with Pierre and like we were just sitting there, right? We didn't come up to you guys right away because. We had great shot, and no one was telling us to move because we had a camera. Like, I was getting up down the stairs, Bro. like, filming and shit. Like, I could have gone on the field if I wanted to. Also, I think if you think about it, like, UT being such, like, a pres uh, prestigious, like, football school and the amount of media exposure they fucking get there going to the SEC, it's probably normal for them to just have guys, like, wearing, tech, like, Longhorns gear with the camera. You can just assume, oh, media. You don't even think anything of it. You know what I mean? But I mean, like, they'd usually have pass. Typically, yeah, but yeah. I, I think you're not looking for it compared to a school that's, like, a Minnesota. Why are you A filming? shittier Big Ten, a, like, smaller-scale yeah. Big Ten school. It's like, who are you? You know what Why I mean? Are Why you are you here? What are, what's going on Stand right now? More, yeah. yeah, but if you're at Texas, look at the guys in the team. You got Quinn Ewers, Arch Manning. There's pro maybe they have just a fucking video guy. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, let them do their thing. They're probably just videoing the, someone on media. Could be an NIL videographer. Any, anything. You know, like a specific athlete's videographer yeah. that, that wouldn't shock them. Like, yeah. Oh, this is Arch Manning's video guy for like... I don't know. They're doing this a YouTube documentary blog. on them yeah. for the four years at Tennessee or uh, Texas, whatever. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you literally just kind of assume some sort of media, let them go type of thing. Uh, but the game itself, I don't think one person in that stadium sat down f five quarters, including overtime. It was one of the most, if not the most, beside like Florida State, you were at the LSU game, but I'll presume LSU. Yeah, Bamba was a little yeah. bit of seating, but it was more chill. But like those three, it's got to be, it's got to be up there. Am oh, I wrong? Yeah. Like, what would you say? Like the actual game atmosphere it itself. Yeah, it was up there with like the Tennessee, Bama, yep. LSU, Florida State. I think it probably most reminded me of the floor, like the Florida State game that Dave and Pierre were at. I would because agree. of the like the comeback by Kansas State. Yeah, it going to overtime. Fuck. The game was like. Head and Heels, Texas's game, like all game. They were up by. Three I thought it was going to be a blowout. We were going to be leaving, mm -hmm. and then we end up staying. Kansas State comes back, starts taking over, ends up tying, misses a big field misses goal, but still, twenty yards, man. That yeah. was bad. If you look back on, but it, dude. still ends up tying the game, and it was pretty similar to the Florida State Miami game two years ago when Dave and Pierre also came. And they where Florida State was crushing it all game. Miami, then Miami starts back. getting some momentum, comes back, and then Florida State gets a big drive at the end of the game to and win. And a huge stop. They, they scored in our end zone too. Yeah, so. and they scored in the end zone. So I mean, that was a very very similar experience. And Florida State Miami was one of the best games we've ever been to, and this was also one of the best games we've ever been to. I think it was just you can tell there's a ton and a ton of like loyalty from this fan and people we always had people saying you're gonna love the texas game day you're gonna love the texas game day awesome it's just it's culture everyone yeah it's culture it this reminds me of that like i said that sec tier like 
I give a fuck, and we're going to win. This almost gives me the vibe of like Alabama in the sense that if they lost that game, I would a large amount of people would have been moods ruined, not going out. Similar to Bama, if they lose, we're not going out. We're not partying. I don't think it's like a win or lose, we still booze. It's like we win, we booze. You know, similar to Bama in the sense of like they have that hierarchy where it's like we're not taking a loss. We're not losing. Uh, So I, I got that in the sense of like the Bama loyalty from fans mixed with like the game atmosphere was like Florida State. So overall game day, fucking awesome. Uh, and then we come back. We do have like kind of like a little nap sesh, hot tub sesh, hot tub, sesh. Hot tub little bit of a nap. But we still get ready for dinner. We go to dinner with the boys, solid ass food. Um, I ripped like I got a fucking pork. Boys ripped some steak, some chick. It was a great time. Yep. Change. You actually yacked after dinner. Do you want to ex- oh, explain shit. the kid? what happened there? I forgot Dude, about that. the drink mixing was just not it. Insane. We started with so I mean, and then on top of that, a very heavy meal where we had like <laughs> a fucking twelve ounce steak and fries. And um, and then we had started with espresso martini, then went to red wine, then to a gin and tonic, and then back to an espresso martini. Just a terrible mix of drinks on top of the heavy food. Personally, I and, loved it. Well, I mean, you didn't drink your like gin and tonic and you didn't drink your red wine. <laughs> so you only had espresso <laughs> martini, so you didn't mix anything. Yeah, no, I just, wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to give you shit. So that was a bad mix. I probably like should have just stuck with red wine. I think would have had a way better night. Like, I mean, I had a really good night, but in terms of like not yakking, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, coffee. I don't even know why we did that. Like, mix the red wine and fucking espresso martini. I don't know what was going on. And it was just a lot. You said your stomach wasn't feeling great either after, right? I think I ate too much. I think I had, you know, the fries. I had my pork chop, which was best pork chop I've ever had. Had a little bit of Zaps' chicken. Dave gave me, like, fucking way too many pieces of his steak. So <laughs> I was, like, I felt like the trash can a little bit. Like, everyone was just tossing what they didn't finish to me. And then I felt, like, l- just large. You know what I mean? Like, I had a lot of food. And all the drinks, gin and tonic, that was not sitting good in my stomach. I think that's the one thing I would have not wanted was that because I was fucking with the martinis. I can bag the red wine. It was the gin and tonic. I think the soda or like that just that was very bubbly. Yeah. And I don't think that was good with me. So I didn't feel phenomenal. Um, We end up then we go to you yak it off. Someone gives us. What drink Dude, that did you was have? like one of the worst yaks in my oh, life because burners, it wasn't right? it was wasn't Thick. like a drunk yak. It was like food. My stomach right now is in fucking a blender and it's just like making its way back up and it was so thick Ugh. and I didn't have like enough water. So yeah. it was just, it was like, it was, I felt like a, the pieces just like coming up. That's like, gross. It was thick. It was, yeah, I'm sorry for the no, no, brutal I, I, explanation. No, you got it, right? The people want to know how but bad it, it was like, gross. Imagine like yogurt like just the same consistency of yogurt coming back up oh. never eating yogurt again oh yeah i know what you mean and i can tell just from like like you had a, you crushed a steak you know what i mean like that's gonna come up like that's not digested yet yeah, that's, that's why i didn't want to yak because i i also like really liked the steak yeah that's like, an I'm expensive like, dinner bro well <laughs> <laughs> there goes all the food i ate tonight <laughs> whole meal gone dude literally yeah. and that then like to put some uh reference of like time in there it was literally we left the restaurant we walked down that same street we walked out of. He yacked like within two minutes, yeah. not even. Yeah. Well, you didn't feel good. It was the kind well, of I thought, thing where you yeah, kind of knew. I was going to yak at yeah. like, the restaurant. I was just holding it in. And then we started walking, and like I think it just got Instantly, the yeah. system moving. moving. Yeah. And I was like, yep. Yep, it's going to come out. If I don't do this now, I'm going to have a terrible night. Yeah. So a fair move, fair play. Um, we end up leaving Chanchi Yaks. We walk over, didn't get into this like dive bar speakeasy. or speakeasy. My apologies. So we make our way to our another bar night at the ranch which is people were saying it was going to be a good time decent i think the atmosphere and the layout i really really like upstairs patio outdoor vibe two booths beside like split between a dj dance floor bar in the back sick layout like i love the outdoor yeah. vibe and and that it was like up top kind of gave that nash feel kind Rooftop, of vibe yeah. kind of where you have to go up and then you see like the club part and you can look over super sick yeah. music was gas pierre and all the boys ripping co2 cannons i was confused how it like Bro, like, I don't know if it's an Austin thing, but why do they start so late? It didn't get packed until, like, past midnight. So, yeah. and that's, and people did say, like, Max had to text me, it's probably going to start bumping past midnight. It's a later start here. I don't know. But it's not like they have a later end. Like, you, I don't know like, why. You get there past midnight, you're staying there for an hour. I don't, One I hour don't. you're out. 
I logistically, I don't know why it is. And I'm almost trying to think it could be because it is more of a club high, like keep up, like speed kind of bar. So do you, I don't know if think that made sense. Do you think that <laughs> maybe, my head. do you think a lot of people, because there's so many bars, dive bars, chill spots that they go have a dinner, go to a bar, smash drinks. Then when you're hammered, then you go to these clubs. So I think we started the night, which I mean, we got there like 11, 15, 11 30. So we started the night when it uh, should have been a prime time, but because people are at there are so many other spots to go to. They end the night at places like the ranch. And That's I could, I got you could hundred percent see that it that started filling sense. in. Music was good. Uh, I actually first, first time going out, I didn't do a pants beer cause I had the dress pants on. Oh, so I, wow. I respectfully had to decline a couple of people for a pants beer. And I respected that everyone was cool about it. They just put it down their pants. It was a good time. Wow. Um, had a, new drinks. We had some whiskey vodkas down the pants. Uh, it was good. It was fun. Everyone was having a good time. And, um, who was drinking a whiskey vodka, some fan. It was like some like, a whiskey vodka. Some dark. It was like a dark. Could have been a whiskey vodka. Eh? Two. Alcohols, oh fuck! Man. Whiskey, <laughs> whiskey and coke. Coke and whiskey. My bad. My bad. Or, or coke and, uh, coke and cocaine. Vodka. So one of the two was a darker drink. Heroin. Just, oh, fuck Math? man. Give me okay. Give me a break, boys. And then he Speed. chucked it down his pants. Yeah. Adderall. Holy fuck, man! There's a lot going on right Acid? now. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was a good, good time. time. It, was it was a great, great. time. Was I great. had a lot of. Again, it was in one of those things. Actually, I do want to talk about something. I do want to talk about something. The woman. Oh, the women, I was stunned as to, I think I overestimated Mid. what was going to happen with these. A lot of people said, you know, Texas girls, huge school. You would expect a lot of people to come to University of Texas. Uh, yeah, not a, girl, not a school with attractive women. I'm just going to be honest. It was like, <laughs> I, I don't know how you guys, I don't know where they're at. I don't know where, it, but uh, shockingly, like shockingly, what the fuck? Yeah, you don't expect a it. a massive city and like such a big time school. Huge school. And for like the hype around just Texas, Texas girls. I yeah, agree. I agree. I was like, I didn't. I to be honest, I didn't see. I didn't see any. Better at Texas Tech and Texas a and I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I'm Fuck, gonna be honest. Yeah. Texas Tech for sure. Hundred percent. Texas a I hate to admit it because I but don't yeah. like a and because they're yeah. called weird fucks. But yeah, mm. kind of. I so, would say so. Yikes. Uh yeah, yeah. That's that's a shock right there, ladies and gentlemen. But I mean. Other than that, like the late, like I guess the girls, it like still does live up to like Texas football, insane game day. And I do, the bar life's wild. You can go fucking anywhere. It's massive. So many options to yeah, choose from. Yeah, we passed by some like spots are bumping. Yeah. That just was fucking like bumping. Mm, we're passing by all these spots and we get to a place that's just empty. <laughs> I and yeah, and it did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was the, all those spots that we passed. I'm like, those are fun <laughs> yeah and it was it was one of those where i almost feel like fuck like i feel like this is one of the schools where one person's recommendation isn't necessarily what's going to be bumping depending on the weekend like i feel like there's so many people again there's so many people that go to the school one person says i like this club there's four other clubs that could be bumping that night and i feel like that's what we ran into i feel like we ran into good spots but you don't know on what weekend that spot's going to be good. Does that make sense? Because there's yeah. so many options. Because both those spots, and I did talk to a lot of people. A lot of people said, Ranch, that spot's going to be fucking mental. Even Concrete Cowboy, solid spot. Like, But I feel like there's just almost too much that not the greatest of weekend for our spots. Nonetheless, really good time. Chance, we got to pencil in some numbers now. I don't I know. know if, I'm doing it right now. Okay. I think we should start with Bar Life. Just sure. Because we're on that I do. Right now. Okay. I got a number. What do you got? I'm, and I feel like this is fair because i feel like it is it deserves to be i'm gonna go nine two i went nine point three so fair i yeah. think that i that think it makes like, sense i there's two schools that are above it and i would probably change one of them um it's kind of similar to georgia in the sense of like how many bars they have yes but there was none that we saw that like raged the way georgia did rage at fair like 1787 and on top of that, I have FSU as well over it just because, yeah, there was a lot of spots at FSU. There wasn't as many spots at FSU, but the spots that they had were so fucking good. I agree. And I agree. And it's tied, I think, with, with Bama in the sense of... Uh, Fair. Not Also, not as many spots, but the spots there were Better. really fucking good. I get it. Okay. So, we're fair with that. Uh, athletics, uh, I got a number, another number here. Curious to what you're going to go with this one. Uh, my mind my, my might be high, but I think it's... I think it's earned. I what is it? I went nine one. Wow, that's a that's really good. I uh, the way I look at it is I look at a couple things. I look at everything around that atmosphere for the game, the game itself, the energy in the stadium, 
and the whole vibe of it's similar to like that Alabama, we're not going to lose, we're going to fucking win. Loyalty, fun, and I had fun. I'm going to give it a 9-1. And they have amazing athletics. like Overall. Like really good athletics yeah. overall at mall sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to drop it. I'm, I can't go in the 9 just because I wasn't a huge fan of the tailgate. Fair. I don't think there, I think it was way too spread out. I don't think there was like really any. There was like the streets that were kind of just like in the way. It felt yeah. like there wasn't like a main tailgate area. Okay. Um, and there was not really, there was there even like a frat lots or anything like that? So there's no? frats will throw like at their spot type okay. of thing. Yeah, so I think I don't think it lives up to the Bama tailgate. I think Bama tailgate was slightly better. Fair. I also think like a Michigan tailgate was yep. a lot better just because of like how many like people are in like one area. Like they use that entire golf course across the stadium. Yeah, fair. So I went eight eight for okay. Texas. Still a solid number. Really, yeah. really high eights. Can't go wrong with that. Um, Greek life. So keep in mind, no frat events this week. They do have, this is a school from the people I talked to that throws down their big events on away weekends, road weekends, however you want to call it when they're, when they're not playing football there, because a lot of their focus is the tailgate or the post tailgate party. They put, you know, when they're, when their team's not there, they'll throw their big ragers. There's a huge frat event hosted at Sig Kai that's going to hold 1400 people. They already sold tickets. They got a VIP section. 10 round fight sorority fight with nine frat fights or like 10 frat fights might be 11 fights total super sick they do throw down big i do know that we unfortunately didn't get a witness one because we went on again a you know a home game so no one was really throwing anything big worked with sig kai really sick house a really actually a decent house but what i liked was their apartments that were attached to the house but it was separate bro. bro it's like a hotel the room was rooms were massive they were solos you get your own bathroom your own sink in your own room clean as fuck and it's like an apartment building connected to the frat house but it's separate so you can throw in your backyard and frat house can you be completely Very cool. completely separated from your apartments which are basically connected to the frat house i love the i love the layout of that because i would live there i Me would 100 percent live there guys were chill um but again, it is tough to, it's kind of tough to put a number on it because we didn't see a big event, but they do host it. So what number did you go with here? Or would you like me to go first? I went with 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay. I went with 8-7. So I obviously can't go to the nines because, you know, we didn't experience anything, but it's kind of one of those things where like, you don't just trust, you know, you don't just trust what people say, but you got a good idea. And we saw videos. No, I've, yeah, we've seen videos too. They, yeah. they show us the, a lot yeah. A ton. A ton. And it's also notable, like, Texas Greek life is, you know, one of the stronger in the country. Re- like, overall nice houses um, and good dudes. So, yeah, I think that's a fair score. Really, Texas is going to be, you know, one of the... I think that's the numbers we just gave is probably the highest What's score. What's your overall? Am I allowed to say that on camera? I mean... I kind of just want to know. Same. Sure, I'll Let's, say it. Wait, what are our t- current top three? Oh, wow. I have a nine. I have a nine as well. Oh, it's a nine. Text- so it's a nine. I feel like that's fair. Wait, what is that's- our current top three? Does that crack the top three? Uh, our no. top three is... Bama's no. 9.3, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then... Florida's LSU's nine. nine L- LSU's nine something. Florida's Pens- nine. Is that top five? We're going to have to go back and punch in some numbers. Oh, wait, Florida's I nine. I Instagram. Yeah, but I don't know what like what's like a nine. Like mine's a hard nine. Mine's also oh, mine's like an eight point nine. Mine was twenty seven on the dot divided by three. It was a hard nine. Mine was eight point nine six seven. Okay, so it's probably like an eight point nine eight seven. Oh shit! Right yeah, I mean it's. Oh yeah, well, I mean we have a three way tie. We have Penn State, Arizona State, and Florida all at a nine. We got to see the exacts on like who gets yeah. that. I think where. Arizona State was a. I think Arizona State was a down. Like a nine, yeah, closer a to a nine point or nine point one than a nine oh. point like zero five. Okay, so Arizona so State would down. go. That makes sense. Which that means checks Penn out. Penn State also rounded down. That and checks out. Florida, I don't know what Florida. So I mean, it it I think it is out of the top five, but in the top ten. And well deserved. Another well deserved school. I, University I, I was of Texas. expecting that. Yeah, I mean, I was well expe- rounded. Well rounded. I, I agree. I think there's nothing you can say that's like. This, this number shouldn't shock anyone. It makes sense. Checks out all the boxes. Obviously, just certain small things, like you said, like doesn't have a main common huge tailgating scene that the other schools do. Small things here or there, but overall, University of Texas, it's, it's a top 10 party school in the nation. Um, guys, let's start. Are we going to move on? We're going to move on to 
social media world. A couple big things that we got here. Jake Paul is funny again. Actually, he just tweeted uh, at the time. This is coming out on Tuesday, 830. He just tweeted. It's Tuesday morning. He tweeted a few hours ago that big announcement tomorrow. He announced last week he's going to be fighting December 15th, his next fight. Uh, and he's announced, he just tweeted today that it comes out tomorrow. So super excited on that. It's going to be apparently like a real boxer that no one knows so i don't know how like hype it's gonna be oh yeah. so he's going again okay so he's route. going the route of like he wants to start taking on like actual like boxing amateur pro boxers good on him i mean what do you what do you guys think about that i feel like you don't i'm not a big it. fan of it okay why is that i mean go ahead with why you don't like it but I, i'm not a big fan because i don't think jake should i mean like go for it but like realistically like you're not gonna like he's never gonna be a Canelo like he's never gonna be like there's just strictly it's just just not enough like he could prove me wrong but I just don't think there's enough time to be able to like be that good in a sport and start at the age that he started at like Fair. all of these like when have you ever heard of like anyone being a fucking goat of a sport and Canelo and Mayweather and all these people are go to the sport starting not only in like like not they probably didn't even start in high school like and he started way after like university would even be a thing pretty sure i hate to be this guy i think tyson fury started very late i don't know how late but it was an abnormal like he didn't grow up tyson fury i'm pretty sure didn't grow up like fighting until like early teens i want to say or maybe mid-teens it was a little bit later but Jake that's fair but i think also for him it's like he's heavyweight yeah so he can be a bag of milk yeah he and literally is a bag of and milk. i don't it's not a very in when you get like the heavier weights is not as skilled yeah as it is just like power and be able to like take punches i agree versus like he's not at that like height or weight to be able to do that so he now needs to like gain an insane amount of skills in a short period of time yeah that's true and i and i do agree i kind of so i would just be like take the bag and fight like other creators and make it like make a story the entertaining it. route like continue yeah. just being entertaining because i do think that's also going to affect his career that by taking these like nowhere like no name fighters people aren't going to watch as much and i think if he continues down that route it's just gonna be like less and less viewership and he's kind of just going to fall off instead of being the main like event and main thing mm -hmm. that people are talking about I think oh, sorry, I think he's gonna do this, and he's gonna say that he like he's doing the traditional route, and then he's gonna get called out by another influencer, either whether it's a Fury rematch or KSI, and I think he'll go back to that eventually. I don't think he'll go into this amateur boxing without coming back for too long. It doesn't like like you said, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, unless that's really what he wants to do, like a hundred percent to his heart, like. I want to pursue pro boxing. Fuck everything else. Fuck the money. Fuck the clout. And that's what I want to do. Then he's taking the right steps. He's going traditional. And like best of luck to him. But you know like like how Gideon just dropped everything and started his you know channel about faith and Christianity. Like he could have the similar mindset with boxing. Like I just really want to do this. And Logan Paul says it multiple times like Logan or like like uh, Jake devoted like he wants to do this he's telling me he wants to be a great and like jake has done nothing but prove people wrong his whole life so yeah, yeah. i just think it's like he fought tyson fury which didn't look great and he's like a m mid to low tommy level fury. tommy pro fury sorry yeah time yeah. tommy fury and mid to low level pro boxer so like and he's been fighting for how many years now jake if i said five yeah, four so to five like as a as like he's got so much like you need to be fighting for like 10 to 15 more 10 to 20 more years yeah. to be at like canelo's level and and he's gonna be f what 40 years old in his prime like yeah. that's not possible it's true what i could see happening is jake i feel like is very calculated in the sense of he's trying to just change this narrative because he does believe in a big thing that even what he tweets about is like he was really going for Naganu against Fury and he even said like Naganu there could be a case Naganu beats Fury but he gets the decision as Fury just knows it technically but if you look at it like if you just watch the fight it could have gone either way essentially where Naganu keeps up he's so adamant on getting these mixed martial arts guys in the ring where I think he's gonna this could be just a fucking reach he's gonna pick this you know a pro boxer that's got a great record sleep him just because this pro boxer might be just facing like 
dog shit people. So he's strategically going to pick a boxer that he's going to fucking knock out and just end better than he's taken on some MMA guys. So he's going to come out and, and this is going to be his like story is going to be like, I took, I got a pro boxer, beat him, but I had a harder fight against Anderson Silva. I had a harder fight against both my Woodley fights. Like he's basically going to go in and with the narrative, like he's got to have to go in destroy him and then be like now i'm gonna go back to my bringing the mixed martial arts guys with bigger names because those are better fights for me and i just showed you why i he's he's gonna change True. that narrative where i don't need to fight average boxers just to get a record so he's just doing it just to shut people up boom and then go back to it well, that's like, what i think only, like people are gonna talk no matter what it's just the next step for him he's done everything yeah that they've said that he couldn't do and that's what but i think if he sleeps like an, a guy that's hands seven down. and oh Sand, could be the same down. as him like he's like five one six one he sleeps and, and six people and are oh. gonna say shit about it too they're gonna say like oh you know like that was a shitty boxer or whatever it's like where do you want him to go do you want him to go and face the best right away and just ruin his career dude it's no facts. one does that no one does that. and now he has an argument saying i could make more not even about the money like it's gonna be a more entertaining fight taking on an a high value MMA guy and yeah. it's going to be a good fight and he's like I just fought this guy and it was easy it was almost too easy where it's like don't look at I think he's going to change the narrative don't look at records more yeah. so just look at the fight two big names it's a fight you know what I mean who cares one's MMA it's going to be a good fight I got a couple facts for you guys right here Two day, uh, about a few days ago according to the Wall Street Journal I think it was three days now Netflix might stream one of Jake Paul's boxing matches live on the service netflix is looking to live stream boxing matches and they're going to use jake paul's fight to potentially be the first it is still an early idea though no telling whether it's going to be the december fight because it's almost too soon um but jake's probably going to fight in 2024 and it looks like they are going to come to agreement or try netflix is going to try to get a live like his fight live on netflix which is just early reports but that's it's what netflix wants to do and i feel like interesting if the money's there i think i don't see why jake would would not go that route, but just because something different that I yeah. saw a report on, I wanted to see what you guys thought about that. Also, yeah. I think it's cool because, like, I think that's cool because I think a lot of people don't watch boxing because of the platforms it's on. Yes, and like I agree. So pay per view, so it's expensive. expensive. But also, it's like a lot of people I know, like I didn't know how to buy pay per view until we did it. Same, like literally, Same I had no idea how it worked. I have no idea what pay per view is. Like pay per view, I don't, I don't know any any of that. But like, it's like Netflix. Everyone has Netflix. Everyone knows someone with and Netflix And the younger account. generation love is and all that's Netflix. his demographic. Yeah. So it's perfect for Netflix. To, if they want to branch into that, that's where they start because majority of people are going to be watching for Jake Paul. True. Like, why wouldn't you just throw it on? You well, have Netflix. What is the advantage to Netflix? Because in my, like, the advantage to these random, whatever, even to zone, not being random, but like... The advantage to pay per view is you need to pay to watch it. If you're gonna if you're gonna watch a fight, you have to pay a decent amount of money. That's how that's how these companies make money, and that's how the, the fighters make money. Netflix, if you're saying his entire audience is already on Netflix, then what does Netflix get out of it by mm. streaming this? Well, if you get the unless it's a pay per view on Netflix, that's what I was that's, just about to say. Yeah, that's probably what it would be. Which I think is just like more user friendly to the younger generation. It is more user friendly because on top of that, most Which people probably everything. already have a Netflix account, and DAZN yeah. is like a fucking twenty five dollars, way more expensive than Netflix. And then no one's gonna at least like you are already either using a Netflix subscription, or you're gonna use it in the future. Also, yeah. DAZN wanted us to sign up for a twenty five a month no, you membership. Had you had to sign up with a paid membership just to buy it. Yeah, just to so buy nice. the pay per view. Yeah, so I think that's another good point. Is so, I, th I also Jake did the untold. He already did a documentary on Netflix, so there could have been some really good numbers that that did to Netflix, where it was like you know they might have seen a, a spike of like people getting Netflix to around the time Jake's Untold series came out to the point where it's like yo this guy can actually move if they just want to see his story imagine like what if we live streamed or took on one of the events so maybe like behind closed doors that's why they're speculating it now because let's say his documentary did that fucking well um but Netflix I think it was cool. is like the not a, I wouldn't say a monopoly because there's a lot of streaming services but like obviously the biggest streaming service for and being them getting now into like original shows and stuff like yeah. that have that have crushed it that is i guess like the next step is Live maybe streaming. they make their way into like the sports world that's true of like getting potentially rights to even yeah. you know big leagues i mean you look at youtube tv they YouTube, have the yep. rights they have hulu has live sports there's uh a lot of other ones like disney plus Amazon has espn prime. prime video prime video has it like 
they're Netflix lacking. Is, yeah, they're kind of lacking now. To be honest, that, about it. they're probably looking at the you know influencer boxing scene, which is you know taken on by Jake, who's even trying to get it more like trying to take it at least the most legit. And it's like we gotta. To be honest, he's probably the best way that they can get the most eyes fast. Like Seems if you like want the best, fast. Mo- best opportunity that they could have to Damn. do it. And it's unique. It's not like they're just doing everything. It's cool. It's a, it's a unique position and yeah. method to kind of open into that sports world. I love that. Speaking of unique, unique uh, positions to open up in the sports world, guys, this is a huge signing, mainly... Uh, mainly for, I guess, you know, us being Leafs yeah. guys, Logan Paul and KSI's prime sponsor, NHL superstar, Austin Matthews. Couple, couple fun facts I got for you guys here. First NHL athlete to get sponsored, the prime team, first major sport athlete out of the big four, MLB, NHL, NFL, and the NBA. Along with Austin Matthews, prime has signed the following athletes, UFC's Alex Volkanovsky, Israel Adesanya, as well as Manchester City striker Erling Holland. A Holland, Holland, and Ashton Villa women's forward Alicia Lehman. Matthews is now the fifth athlete signed by Prime. Huge moon for the NHL, but mainly Austin's personal brand. Uh, really cool. I didn't, I didn't expect them. You know, when they were going to sign a big North American athlete, that it. I last thing I thought was it was going to be an NHL player. You could look at NBA, NFL, maybe like a Joe Burrow, or uh, if you want to look at the NBA. The new fucking that uh, the first overall pick Wembenyana or Victor. whatever. Yeah, like you Wembenyana. could look at that makes more sense to me. But they went, they went with uh, our guy Matthews, which is kind of nails. It's I don't know. Cool. I think it is the person that benefits the absolute most from this is Austin. Austin. Has to be Hands like down. he Has to be. did a didn't they he do a collab, collab post, post with as all well with Logan Prime Logan and KSI. and KSI and Prime. Austin doesn't even have a million followers. Logan and KSI have twenty. How each. much does he have now? He at the oh I know I know the number of the day of I checked it was like eight eight hundred and twelve or eight hundred and sixteen thousand so, I believe and then so we're gonna fact check that quick. The reason uh, I think this came about is Austin signed to Wasserman Hockey Wasserman Hockey whatever mm-hmm. some big agency um, yep. that also has you know many other leagues involved, but also um, who has Logan signed for Wasserman Boxing. Ah, uh, so. I think there was some connection Cross. there in yeah. the sense of, you know, Logan signed to the same agency that Austin Matthews signed. I'm sure there's probably a ton of other athletes that yeah. are also signed yeah. to Wasserman is a whole like from multiple leagues. They're fucking massive. Um, and they're like a newer age kind of agency aside from like the WMEs and like the CIA. I think there's another one. Mm-hmm. Um, so it made sense. And I think that's the best guy to do it other than I agree. obviously Connor, Connor McDavid. McDavid. Yeah. Um, but I think Austin has a little bit more personality than McDavid and is in a bigger market than Connor McDavid. So yeah. it makes sense. And he's also like, you know, a top five player in the league. So it's not like you're getting like a mid, you know, kind of like a mid player. You're getting a top, arguably the best goal scorer. Very right good team that has a potential to win a Stanley cup in, in the, near the future. next five years. So you got to look at that like timing wise too. They're going for the young, young superstars, young superstars in the UFC world. Soccer, they got the best player, arguably the best player, hands down in the world right now. And now you're going Austin Matthews, best goal scorer in the league right now, 13 goals, 12 games. How's your mother? I think Zaps, it's pretty the, crazy. He's at 821k. So he gained about uh nine, seven to nine k. No, I mean pretty sorry, sick for just a collab time, for a collab like, post. That's yeah. pretty sick though. Um, so just, sorry, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say I think what uh, they're doing really well, KSI and like just Prime in general, is like expanding internationally. Which is kind of crazy before they even like really hammer the U.S. I feel like they, I guess they had the U.S. kind of like on lock yeah. already. And they have been like expanding internationally. Like Israel and Volkanovsky are both Australian. Yeah. So they have now like a footprint in a major continent. Huge. And now with Canada, like Austin's, I would say like w- one of the biggest celebrities in Canada. True. Because of hockey being such a big sport. I agree. And Erling Holland being like in the Man City, like UK. Europe in general. I agree. Europe, because yeah. of soccer. But I mean KSI already has kind of Europe as well on lock. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see like who they who they get in the States. Like there's gotta be a guy that like there's gonna be a big guy they sign. Oh yeah. no, it's not gonna be now that I said Joe Burrow, he signed a body armor which would be a competitor because that's yeah, hydration just so it actually wouldn't be Joey Bur- Joe Burrow. I'm trying to think are you talking about signing the North American, right? Like probably the other leagues. Like it needs to like it has yeah. to be a young guy in the NBA, young guy in the NFL. Like Bronny James. Like I could see Bronny He's James just started. They just, no, but I mean oh, like NIL. They could get in the NIL deals. It could be a college deal. I don't think they'll do that. I think Prime will uh, buy a sponsorship on a NBA jersey in the future. You know how Mr. Beast yep. just bought the Charlotte Hornets one. Yeah. 
Feastables. It's on there. Like I think those kind of businesses are going to be doing that because they come on the jersey logo, or they're on the every like yeah. every branding of a game. Like you could be wearing this uniform for a game post, the final score graphic, Feastables, third quarter update, yeah. Feastables, video of a junk of a like a highlight play, yeah. Feastables. You know, it's like that seems like it's perfect for them. Yeah, I don't. Th- I th- I don't think they're going going to go for like a young guy. Because it's like already they have that audience. They have right. the younger. Everyone production. that follows Bronny James follows KSI and Logan Paul. Fair. That's fair. Like he's in that space with like Aiden Ross and all that shit. Yeah, like yeah. that I don't think that will do anything for them. I think getting a fucking vet in a big league like that is a bigger move because okay. it's like I agree. Yeah, LeBron actually. James signs the prime. You have now have like a completely that, different audience. That, that would be change fucked. the game, yeah. Like that would you be have fucked. A, like KD, like Kyrie, like any like I don't even know if Kyrie's still like crushing him. Steph league, Curry, Luca. I could see a Luca Doncic. Like I could see that. That would be that would be pretty sick. Huge. That and now that like actually helps the brand in the sense of like you now have an entire different audience that didn't even potentially know who Logan or KSI are. And he just got a podcast with Mark Cuban, so you don't yeah. think maybe he was even asking. And like, they're hey, like potentially going to sign with the Dallas Mavericks after their new deal or their current deal ends, which is apparently soon. Wait, who? Dallas Mavericks and Prime. Oh, so you're saying like the jersey logo? No, or like the um, official, the official, the official drink, drink, like similar the official to like the Dodgers the, yeah, and yeah. Arsenal and stuff. Yeah, pretty yeah. sick. That's, that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, and so damn. Luca would Luca, make sense. Luca made sense because he's already got the connection with Mark. Hey, Mark, like, can I get? In? Well, I mean, they got the connection with Dallas. Like, it would just make sense yep. to have the best player on the team also signed to them. Yeah, that's pretty sick. And it's not like it's going to be a conflict of interest. Yeah. That's true. Unless like he has a Gatorade deal or something, that's uh, I that's think pretty that's sick. actually that's, probably the reason why they can't they can't do any of the big leagues. Gatorade is like number one throughout most leagues, and the Leafs and the like the Leafs don't have a drink because BioSteel just went fucking bankrupt. Oh, oh yeah, shit. that's right. That's probably right. Like the whole NHL and even BioSteel went drink. bankrupt. Yeah, shit. So they're yeah. not going to exist anymore. They don't. I think that was the hydration drink of the NHL. Fun and fun and random, <laughs> man. <laughs> my God. So that would make sense. That's why they probably can't sign like any of the like the major the, any major league teams because they already have drink sponsors. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And the players are probably associated that's why with I that. think like when they got the UFC, that's so big, bro. And like so like big. that's giant, giant, bro. giant. Like they're yeah, taking... and they had to get the UFC before they got those pl- people in the UFC. Yeah, that, I mean, makes sense. I don't know why they're we making didn't moves. think of this. They're making it makes sense. We just, we just, yeah, never mind, guys. Um, we just backtracked there. We yeah. just reverse engineered actually why they didn't do that. But anyway, still pretty cool for Austin, uh, Toronto. And as a fan, I fuck yeah. with it a ton. He's my, one of my favorite athletes. That so, was really cool. Um, debate questions time. Uh, actually, no, sorry, my bad. Fan questions. If you guys are watching right now on the Squad Brunch podcast, we're over 3.71 thousand subs. We are gaining a few, a few hundred every week. So I appreciate you guys a ton. Make sure to subscribe. It, it helps the videos a ton. Uh, any questions you guys want answered, all you got to do is go to the YouTube podcast, comment down below what you guys want answered. Got a couple ones this week. Question from at Jur718. How would your perfect game day look like from beginning of the morning to the end of the night? Okay. We kind so of touched on this already. We did already touch on this. I, think I will we'll all, say. I think we'll all agree on this. LSU. Or like the LSU style so game like walk day. So like walk us through. Walk so us it's got to be a night game. So I'm talking yep. like 7.30, 6.30 range. Wake up, sleep in so you're, no one's fucking cranky or anything. You can get to the tailgate. You got to have a pre. Don't look at me. You're wait, the cranky one. Wait, what happened? No, you said no one's cranky, and I just looked at Zaps. This guy gets cranky. Oh, wait, wait, this what? guy gets more cranky from sleep than I do. Nah, I think when Chanchi, <laughs> I think when Chanchi's like awake, no, like he he's doesn't. Good. No, he gets cranky, but he doesn't like blame it on the tiredness. He just gets when he gets less sleep, he's a lot more cranky. That's a fact. No, it's not a fact. I That's a fact. I sleep with I you and I know. With like I can two notice hours it. and fucking be fine the next day. Yeah, but you're a dick. No. Okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> so you wake up around noonish. There's a pre, as we said before, the prime tailgate. It's probably like for that, for a 7.30 game, it's probably going to be a 3 o'clock. You need a main area to go that's going to be bumping, whether it's frat lot, like tents, just a giant common area quad that is like at like an LSU, Alabama style thing. But before you go to the 3 o'clock tailgate, you have to have a pre-tailgate probably around 1 o'clock, 2 hour time, maybe even an hour and a half, 1.30, like Balcony Bengals, big shout out those guys, where you have a shit ton of people. I'm talking girls, guys, alcohol, fun shit to do, a stripper porn. A stripper, Maybe a stripper pole, pole in the 
middle of the yeah. fucking room and you're going to pregame for an hour and a half, two hours, fucking have fun. Do your thing. Once you are at a perfect buzz, you are then going to go have a less than a five minute walk to the tailgates. Go huzz. I'm talking jump around from fucking frat tent to frat tent. By that point, you have a solid two, two and a half hours of firing again. Then you go to the game where you are full ripping and it's going to be an underdog game where you're not like you're not favored to win, but it's a fucking rivalry game and you go in there, you win, then you're going to storm the fucking field. It's going to be great energy. Then you mob bars right fucking after because it's prime fucking time. You have to have the best bar in the country right across the street because that's how shit works. Then you have a great fucking night. You don't remember anything. That's the best game day. Tell me I'm wrong. Take a breath, man. That's a good clip. (sighs) There you go. That That was good, eh? That was was very good. That is a perfect game day. That is. Wow. That was a lot. Thanks, boys. Um, Do anyone want to add? That's I think you nailed it, it right on the, the coffin, game, right? dude. Um, all right, boys. Just explained LSU. <laughs> yeah. That was the best, but that was the best game day. It like, was. That's it was really still good. to this day favorite game day. LSU. Like it's not even a question asked. Not even because of the storm either. Every- no, the storm had a fucking. Well, if they lost to the Bama, well, yeah, they lost it. Would have oh, yeah, been way no. worse. Well, yeah, the whole night after, but the whole game day itself was pretty good. Yeah, like, but then like like even to finish it like the fucking but, climatic ending. Yeah, but even if we just beat them normal. Like, I yeah, like yeah. it's still been like. But if they lost, it would have been like, oh, fuck. And it was yeah. an overtime. Yeah, yeah, man. No, that's got to be it. It was so. Um, they, it was not only was it an overtime, but they went for two to yeah. just win the game. It's yeah. Fucking, that's going to be. That's in one of my the greatest games. Speaking of that, Kansas State went for two and did not win the game. Yeah. Fact. <laughs> Good one, change. Yeah. Um, question from at Cameron McCord If Canadian universities had U.S. college football in them, do you think, because legal age is 19 here, it could be the opposite where Americans would then come to Canada? I'm going to say no, and I think this is pretty easy. You guys can answer right after. Um, I don't think kids from Miami or South Florida are going to want to come uh, to Guelph, Ontario, or London, Ontario, where it's freezing fucking cold, even if we had that same level college. Just stay in Florida, dude. Go to Florida State. Like, I don't no, think yeah, that I matters. Agree. Do you know I what mean, I mean? Not There's only st- Florida. You got the Arizona. You got Cali. You got I mean, fucking yeah. Texas. You guys have your own, you like, perf- Carolinas. You have your own professional yeah. football league, and like no, I've never heard one no, person but say I think, like, "Yo, I want to go catch a Canadian football game with you." Up <laughs> no, north. but and I'm from Michigan, bro. That's yeah. not even a far drive. I think it's more so he's saying like, if we did have like, if Guelph on, if Guelph, I don't Guelph so football I, team was like the tier level of a Miami Hurricanes, like that's how good it they would were. obviously help. But I don't think, I don't think the reason U.S. colleges are so good is strictly because of football. I think it's the culture that has been just like built there over. I agree. Like, decades i agree yeah you gotta and change like the centuries. culture it first. starts centuries. with it's even like alumni bro. like every single game has multiple alumni whether it's an alumni weekend whether it's a parents weekend or whether it's just a regular fucking weekend you yeah. have people coming to watch and support and it's like builds such a crazy culture that is just not a thing in canada it's not a thing hundreds of years i have never gone back to waterloo i don't plan on going back <laughs> it's to be honest like i i do not like there's no will ill or like drive inside of me to be like i'm Let's fucking go back. I don't. <laughs> it's not what I'm thinking about right now, man. That's the last thing. And like, no, it's just culture. You got to change the culture of alumni, of graduating, of being, of pride in a school. And then you want to bring over that football, and then maybe in 30 years. But like yeah. right now, if you just put really good football in Canada, fuck no. And that's I don't think that's a hot take. No, no. Yeah. It's also just str- strict like. Location, just population as well. Yeah, though. and that too. Like, there's just not enough people to even fill up a. 800,000 stadium. Not. There's not. <laughs> like, there's just not. There's straight up not. Like Guelph, Ontario, I don't think even has the size. Like, including people that reside in Guelph, Ontario, I don't think the population is big enough to it fill be. up a Penn State stadium or a Michigan, like, big house. No, it wouldn't. And, and again, that <laughs> there's no fucked, chance. It, it actually wouldn't. And I, yeah. and I think that's why people, that's another good point. I think if you, like, yeah, it's, it goes deeper than just putting a good It's also too there. close together. Like, if every province yeah. in Ontario, in every province in Canada had, like, just one spot to go to. That's true. Then maybe. That's true. It's all, it's all like, you got the top four all within An hours hour. of driving. So, it's not even, like, like if you look at Florida, like, Florida State to, like, UF to Miami, there's there's distance. Like Six you're hours talking, each. There's distance. Guelph and L- Waterloo are 45 <laughs> minutes. Like, you no. know, Michigan State and Michigan are a couple hours away. What are you right? looking at, Like, four hours? Let's just say this. On September 2, Michigan Stadium, which has the highest capacity of any college football stadium in the country, yes, has 309 consecutive games with a crowd that has in excess more than 100,000 people. 109,000 people were at the opening game this this uh, 
this opening, opening season game. home opener yeah so like we can consistently get those crowds but if you have the good football team if we had a good football team and 30,000 people show up in our stadium that's shit like it wouldn't be the same at all yeah so like if you don't have the people there in your stadium yeah in the culture and the fans the, and the culture passion, and people yeah. come from all over the state literally, of Michigan literally you know like there's millions of people in the state of Michigan versus like Hundred thousand. That's another 12. thing. It's like you got like people of Michigan either go for two teams. You're a, a diehard Michigan State person, or but most likely you're a diehard Michigan. Michigan. No, I'd say fan. it's about fifty fifty. Oh really? And so, okay, yeah. So that's yeah. but you have two schools that all would either drive to either or, and so there's going to be people there in Ontario. Like it's only the town of Ontario that's going to have, right. or the only the town of Guelph, for example, that's going to have Guelph people show up. Do you know what I'm saying? The state of Michigan has one third the state of Canada or the the country of Canada. Yeah, it's Wait, just what? numbers game. Yes. It's a numbers game, dude. Shit. There's Fuck. ten million people in Michigan. There's thirty something in Canada. Wow. It, it's just like I didn't even think of the entire. Wow. That's I mean, fucked. that's that's also Michigan. Like, dude, the state of fucking California. Oh, don't even has the same yeah. as as Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's like just- we would need one football team in Canada for it to compare to. In the states it's just numbers yeah. so there's there's a ton of yeah there's a ton of different things so first of all so you need we need more people we need 10 times the amount of people in canada yep. and then we need different locations then you need one one football team per province and you need hundreds of years of culture and tradition let's yeah. say 30 let's give like a generation let's say nah. let's say 30 at least at least 30 so it starts like 50, the next generation 50 okay 50 years of no, 30 five decades still. 30 is enough 30 is enough because you could have people coming back yes because then they'll have kids they'll have marriages they'll bring it down like yeah but three if, decades if you're man. 30 your kid's not going to college no you don't 30 you get out of like 30 like let's say it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah i would because you you're have probably four like years of college and then you have 30 so you're like 50 now yeah oh, okay. your kid's yeah, 20 yeah, your kid's yeah. probably 20 i yeah. think 30 years three decades is enough time that that initial blossom of people that are a part of that culture will sprinkle their seeds to theirs and i think also that's three fucking decades like there's got to be a slow exponential increase each year on top of that initial seed of the you know so yeah long story short no yeah long story (laughs) short long story short no uh question from at c dubs 11 new to the pod got some questions uh where can i get the boys 98 logo merch y'all have been repping and these vids are helping me pick what college i'm going to go to so which frat out of all that you've been to had consistently the best guys parties and birds um so a couple things appreciate that with the merch right now we don't have a piece that just has our boys in 98 logo merch that's our og merch um hopefully you know this upcoming year in 2024 we can actually get like proper merch that has the logo so we can get that for you um this question's kind of hard like we've when we do visit a frat it's one party like i don't know who's consistently like if every party Oh yeah, if we had to get oh okay, you mean nationwide, nationwide pike? Yeah. Nationwide it's probably pike, yeah. And I think that just goes to be about the guys are just fun. I don't know. It's they're like bros, Athletic, bros. So like, they're bros, bros. They played sports and in, yeah. in high school, you know, they're they're they like to stay active and fit yeah. and they're also just like they could talk to girls. socially. Stop. They're social. They're social good guys. Like yeah. You can talk to them, they can have a conversation and like they can tell like social cues of like Yo, like, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Like, they're always doing something. It's not just standing around. Again, one thing I also want to add, this does depend on the school. Like, there's also going to be some schools that their pike is might not be good. So, like, yeah, keep yeah, yeah. fucking just f- majority of the time it is pike, but just beware. Um... Debate questions time. You guys ready for that? So appreciate any questions you guys answer on the Squad Bunch pod. Make sure if you guys want something answered, go to the YouTube, comment down below. Appreciate the three questions this week. Uh, guys, we got some debate questions. You guys already know the questions. I'm going to fire away here. I'm curious to see what you guys said. You guys said these were hard this week, so I'm kind of curious to hear you guys' answers, but uh, who's one person that is publicly loved by everyone, but for some reason, you hate them, and why? It's absolutely hard. I said uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Why do you hate The Rock? I think he's overrated as fuck. Like, dude, he's... Okay, he's on steroids, clearly. Clear as day. He's made his whole career off of it. He's a WWE wrestler. Fake as fuck. You think Logan Paul has any respect? Like, sure, he gets a quick... Like, congrats, bro. Congrats. Like, but he literally switched up in, like, two weeks. Took a US championship for a WWE title. Like, nice, man. Like, you're so scripted. Like, did you see that fight, bro? Did you see any of that shit? Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Weird-ass career. Same thing as John Cena. Went into fucking acting. He has the same fucking role in every fucking movie. 
every same it's like usually the same storyline same way he acts same character same remarks like flexes his chest up and down like guys in jumanji i swear like nine out of ten movies he's in bro like i don't know i just think he's fucking mad overrated and everyone loves him that was you awesome. You roasted Logan Paul. And I too. like how you brought in Logan Paul to <laughs> well, trip dude, there. Like, <laughs> like, you don't see shit all over the news about Logan Paul winning WWE like belt, bro. It's because like that shit's fake, bro. Like, yeah. It's scripted. Like, What do you want us to do? Say congrats. You earned yourself up in tears to get written in as the champion? Like, That's basically what it is. It's like you put in your time and you have enough buzz around you. We're going to write you in as the champion. Damn, that is true. Like, Zaps just broke down the W. So if you're a WWE, WWE fan, uh, it's fake, man. Grow the fuck up. It's basically what's been said right now. And uh, your superstars, they're not real superstars. Think about that. Uh, Chanch, what about you? So I went with a um, pretty controversial one. Um, I'm going to get absolutely roasted for this. I went with Taylor Swift, not for the reason of the whole NFL ordeal and the NFL only showing her. I really don't give a fuck. Good for the NFL for fucking using her for marketing. And Travis Kelsey did not blow her up. And Swift, whatever, didn't blow him up. They are big in their own way. I went specifically for Taylor Swift promoting to woman or being promoted to woman as this like super empowering figure when all of her music is about hating guys. And heartbreak. And heartbreak. And how relationships are bullshit and love is not a real thing and it's a game. And she's looked at as this like super empowering woman yeah. figure, but she gives off all of the characteristics of, of like a, a toxic woman, toxic feminist woman. That's actually fact. Bro woke up. And not only did you spit facts, you are going to get an army of people that are about a fucking. <laughs> it's a fucking fact, shooting bro. At, but I act. You know what? Everyone dude? looks at her as like such a positive impact on society, but she's like promoting the most negative things about like love and how like nothing's ever. Literally, there's a lyric in one of her songs that says, "Love is a game." If you think about it, if you're talking so much and like there's all these problems about how many God knows how many ex boyfriends she's been through. Hate to say it, Taylor, you might be the problem, not yeah. the guys. Boom, Swifties, no cap, bro, bring no it cap. on. Bring it on, Swifties. No I'm cat. right here, baby. Comment section's yours. Fucking torque up. Torque up, buddy. Fuck you, by the way. <laughs> Yo, banger. That was fucking awesome. Besides, I, I do know one person from my high school who's a Swiftie. Probably sucks. Awesome, awesome person. Oh, really? Sweetheart, yeah. Great, great person. <laughs> I do like her music a lot. Yeah, I'm more of an Olivia Rodrigo guy, but she fucks. I love a lot. Ugh, yeah, don't even get me stirred about Olivia Rodrigo, bro. <laughs> like I love that music, music, bro. Or other things? No, the music, bro. Yeah, and you should like Taylor Swift's music, too. Mm. He like just said he likes also Olivia talk. Rodrigo. I know. I think I know, I'm more of a like Rodrigo. Music. Who? Taylor Swift. No, I didn't say that. Oh. Anyways, um, in a two-on-two -two cage fight to the death, who is one person, fictional or real, that you'd want on your team and why? Zaps, we'll start with you. Infinity War era Thanos. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five stones on his hand that can control anything. You can get rid of half the earth like that. So I have two people to get rid of? That's fucking easy, bro. I'd actually just mess with them. I'd get like the time stone and make them like 90 years old. Just like as a joke. I'd be like, yeah, now what? And then i just beat the fuck out of some elderly dude. And then Thanos doesn't even have to make him like vanish. So you can just have fun with it. So then it's like, um, what's another one that you can change? So like, you see, you would, beating the shit you would beat the shit out of a nine-year-old elderly Well, person? like if it's fight to the death, bro, I'm talking about my life here. Like, yeah. relax. Like, yeah, I have to fair. fucking live. So, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd do the time stone, make them just ancient, like crippled, like, Arr! and then I think I would just go 1v2 in this situation. And then Thanos just kind of watches, and he's there if he needs anything. Because I don't want to just do nothing in 2v2, you know? It's kind of lame. So, yeah, make them 90 years old. They're in, like, wheelchairs and shit and just, like... Kick them to the ground, bro. They can't get up. And then just beat the shit out of them. That's and then insane. I don't want to kill, though. So I'll let Thanos, like, end up killing them. I think, like, we'll just make him, like, beat the shit out of them. And then he'll just, like, snap and then we'll just vanish. That, that is a great answer, Zaps. What about you, Chanch? So that, that was great. Thank I you. think I, I went with the cage fight being, like, you can't have any weapons in there. Okay. So, like, I was thinking Marvel as well. But, like, all the Marvel characters are only good because of their, like, superpowers and, like, weapons. So I went with the best fictional character that can only use his hands, and I went with the Karate Kid. Solid one. That's a solid 
and it's because like one. there, I was going thinking of like boxing and stuff, but it's a cage fight, and like Karate Kid fucking knows everything. He's the jujitsu fucking like, karate. Like he's a kid he, though, but he was a fucking nail gun, and he could easily beat up two guys to the fucking death. Like he'll use the karate skills. I don't have to do shit. He'll dummy both of them. You're like, oh, pa pa pa, dead. I'm good. Great answers. I mean, I like just it. Solid answer from the fellows right here. Uh, what's the most disrespectful thing that a chick has ever said to you? Saps, we'll start with you. Um, I haven't really had like a direct moment where it was disrespectful directly towards me, but kind of my situation here, it was just more disrespectful, I think, in a way that was unintentional. But I'll just bring up a time, uh, Arizona State. Um, I'm at a party, right? And we're at a darty, and, you know, a beautiful girl comes up to me. Great, you know shining blue eyes like she just looked at me made eye contact i'm like oh my god she's beautiful <laughs> and she's coming up to talk to me and uh, i'm like yo like this is sick this is sick like great time i'm gonna meet this girl and she goes to me she points over there your friend is super hot i just go i look over it's this fucker <laughs> it's this fucker i just go yeah you can go tell him if you want like, go ahead like what the fuck like what do you want me to do for that like I, n I would never go up to a girl a girl's friend that i'm trying to talk to and be like yo your friend's fucking bad as fuck <laughs> like you know what i mean like yeah. what kind of I, statement is that i think it's because she like she wants an intro she wants an intro and she knows like it's that disrespectful you, it's i don't think she th gives a fuck though she's not thinking yeah, that deep you, into that, it that that was my answer and i felt disrespected not not, not disrespected disappointed it's like what the actual fuck it's like someone swiping right on tinder and then they're like yo what's your friend's name in the back <laughs> oh if it was a picture of you and another that's yeah, true like yeah. yo what's your like i hate to be this girl but like what's your friend's name that actually is the exact same yeah that's, that's right which has also happened to me before <laughs> oh, shit. uh not with you guys but uh a buddy at home so okay. fuck yeah um no great one zaps sorry about that man no <laughs> you know what yep Great times. Chance, what about you? I don't really have one, dude, that I could remember, but I wanted to pass the torch to you for this one so you can give your oh, story. Oh, yes, actually. You do have one. Are you talking about my, my schnoz? The schnoz one? No. No. Um, there was, I mean, there's two. Yeah. Oh, the lesbos. No. no. There's three. <laughs> <Shit>. There's three. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was, I was talking about maybe LSU like, Bama weekend. Maybe a, oh a, my a, god, a reflection. Oh, I was oh, also yes. thinking Arizona weekend. That too. Whatever one, we, whatever one you wanted to share. Yeah, Arizona. 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 Let's just say five. The Snapchat. Seconds. Yeah, yeah. There's, oh yeah, dude. One hundred percent. So, so there's I five. Think the LSU Bama might be might be more disrespectful. No, I'll yeah. say yeah. I'll say the LSU Bama one. So we visited Alabama in season one, fall twenty twenty one, and we went there, and there was this girl that we you know talked a little bit over instagram dms like in the summer or whatever meet a bit of bar didn't end up like you know didn't i'm doing anything with her just like made out in the bar typical nice and man. then <laughs> nails hashtag beauty <laughs> <laughs> whatever and then fast forward another year fall season three 2022 we're in lsu they play bama she's going down with her friends we're messaging oh i'll see you at you know fred's see you at fred's on the on the Friday night, I can't believe this is going to be said, but so I remember a senior, you know, it was fine. Like, you know, flirtatious talking leading up to the night, whatever, whatever. And then we're in the bar getting drinks. And at one point she's like, looks at me, taps me on the shoulder. And she's like, Christian, I'm gonna be honest with you. You were hotter last year. And imagine as a dude, like then he went to the gym 365 days in a imagine row. like i actually didn't start oh, going to the gym oh. till march of like six months later but i probably should have that was just so like i wouldn't have said it to a girl because you just don't like say that and it's obviously like what do you respond to that with it's like that's like a shot bro. that's like that's you're, like, you're like, ugly now you're ugly no, that's like, exactly you're not what that means. It's, it's like, like yo, i, I would have fucked you, were, you last year I, but like i'm looking at you in the bar now and i'm drunk and i wouldn't fuck you that's exactly what that means like, yeah and so i was it, like we were texting for this long and like i was excited to see you but you look like this now it's like yes. wow like exactly. my memory of you is just, is last year yeah yeah i'm like, not thinking about you now and i remember like, being i had like, all these expectations for texas texas is gonna be this texas is gonna be this texas is gonna be this then we get there and i was like yeah you're mid and yeah. i was just like imagine hearing that she's like no you're, like, you're still attractive but like you were hotter last year and i was like like as an ego oh dude fucking 
fucking might as well have, Fuck might as well ego, have spat just... in my face and be like you're a piece of shit like i was just like that was ha that actually has to be probably the worst thing i was gonna say the nose one but can't change my fucking nose but my looks i got oh, i got uglier like it's like fuck me right like just literally, literally. fuck me right yeah literally. so yeah that hands down thanks for passing that one on to me that cool. appreciate it um all right that's thanks, the only James. thing i thought of in the bed stories. fuck i love how he said two other things like the schnoz one and Dude, the no you got you got up to five reasons <laughs> before we got <laughs> i was like wait which one are you guys oh, talking oh, the about schnoz one. No. Uh, <laughs> oh the last one no, no. <laughs> yeah okay anyway oh, oh the snapchat no <laughs> yeah i mean that's also one but i wasn't thinking that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyways um yep. what um what's, uh, what are the biggest red flags in a girl based on what they're drinking and you can give multiple if you have multiple so zaps i have multiple you. of course you do first one i have is um if you're drinking an ipa beer like it's a red flag like first off i look at you as a man Fuck. i look at you as an adult dad like you're you're a girl my age drinking ipa what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> you're gonna have a belly when you're 25 you're gonna be fat that's my instant thought it's like a, a dad with a big belly that likes to fish like stop drinking that beer like in general beer for a girl it's nothing wrong with that but i do look at you like you're probably like a tomboy like i don't know why but like especially the ipa though it's like ipa red flag you're a man I'm. I have a Fact. contradicting story to that. I think like most girls that I've talked to that I've got along with well have drinking beer. Yeah, it's because you're gay. But anyway, my other one. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? My other one is Hennessy, because like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, <laughs> that's like, a good uh, one. What, what, that's like, a good one. This girl's probably like fucking off the rails. Psychotic. Psychotic. Ratchet. Fuck. Ratchet. Fuck's wrong with you? Ratchet. Ratchet. Pull up to the fucking pregame. Got a bottle of Henny. Sorry, what? Yeah, you my bad. I should brought my Toronto accent. She's like, I don't even know how to say it. Like, what's a Toronto accent? And like, are you shoddy? Let me pull up with the henny. Like, yeah, I don't, like, shoddy. I mean, pull up with henny. No, that's that like was, Indian. That was yeah. the you kind of like spoke I mean, like Pierre there. Sense. But yeah, yep. Egyptian. Um, all right, Chance. What about you? Yeah, I like the IPA. I answer. do like good. those both. Um, I like that a lot. I went with a Bloody Mary. Mm. Because I'm like, you can drink hot sauce mixed with tomato juice, like just naturally, casually at a bar. Like that's you're fucking that is. weird. That's yeah. what that is. It's Bloody disgusting. Mary is like, to, it's a like a Caesar kind of, but it, I think I think it's a Caesar, but hot. I don't yeah. even know. Um, it's like literally tomato juice. It's gross with hot sauce and alcohol. And if you can just drink that casually and be okay with it, you're fucking psycho. No, I actually, agree. that's facts. Like, maybe you're an app. Like, I could see an absolute 10 out of 10 drinking this, but being crazy as fuck. Oh, hands down. Hands down. Yeah. If she's, yeah. There's, like, one flaw about a girl always. Like, if she's a 10 out of 10, like, she's probably crazy. But, like, if she was drinking that, that's confirmed. She's yeah, crazy. it's confirmed. <laughs> Both my ex-girlfriends love that drink. No way. I swear to God. Well, that makes sense. That, that checks, checks out. out. That, that checks, checks out. out. I Damn. swear to God. I remember being at dinners, and they would, they would get that. That's disgusting. Gross. Oh my god! But also, my mom likes those. So it gets my mom. Damn, fuck! <laughs> Dude, what the hell, man? <laughs> yeah, no, but it is crazy. Like it is like I think it's one of the grossest drinks on the fucking planet, and you should be checked. I think close seconds piss. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you have anything else? Next, I have yeah. Next, I have a tequila Red Bull because oh. I can't see girls for some reason drinking like caffeinated <laughs> alcoholic beverages. That's like a girl drinking a four loco, which also could be on this list. If I, I saw a girl chugging back a four loco, she has fucking problems. problems. Either it's daddy issues or she mentally unstable yes. or she's an alcoholic coming out of high school and is a freshman. Yes. And I think tequila Red Bull is kind of the same thing. Tequila already gets you absolutely fucked up. Mm. Add the Red Bull in there. Like we don't need a tequila fucked up girl on more caffeine. To be honest, I love when girls drink tequila. Tequila is chill. But they already get crazy from the tequila that you don't need that's to fair. add the 200 milligrams of caffeine. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's a good point. I didn't think about it like that. Like, it's like one or the other. You and know what I mean? Like it's like too shit. Much. I had it this weekend. Like, that was recency bias. It was fucking disgusting. I had it's it. what caused you to yak. Probably in the morning. That was because disgusting. You, yeah, because that was your last drink. Remember, yeah. you guys told me to fuck. Oh, my face right away was like fucking gross. It doesn't even um, mix well. Disgusting. Just get a vodka rebel. What the fuck are we doing? Exactly. It's true. Um, all right. Anything else on that one? I'm good. All right, next question here. If you guys could delete one thing from existence, what would you delete and why? Zaps, I, I feel like I know what you're going to say. Ohio State? 
you're telling me I'd pick Ohio State when I have to can get rid of cancer, terrorism, um, racism, world hunger. You think I'd pick Ohio State? No. I, I, if I, I could get rid why. of one thing on this world, I'd get rid of the targeting rule in the NFL and NCAA. <laughs> That's realistic. That is a real. That's up there with those other things, eh? Yeah, hands down. It's like, bro, your star player, oh, he has a hard hit where his shoulder was an inch in the direction of his helmet. His helmet didn't even get hit. He got hit in the shoulder pads, right in the chest. But, yo, penalty, first quarter, he's out for the whole game. You're going to take a person out for the whole game because he hit someone hard? Like, no one in this game is going in just head hunting. No one. So true. Name one person that's doing that. I don't know one. Probably. Uh, like I understand. I understand if targeting would be just a penalty, okay, just like any other thing. But an ejection, an injection for a whole game. What are we doing? That's bullshit. Man of the people. Thank that you. clip. There's gonna be like this guy. <laughs> this guy's president. All right. What about you? I went with cats. Oh, good fucking one. hate them. It's a good one. Absolutely terrible. They do nothing for society. They do nothing for you who just have them as a pet. Um, girls that have cats automatically are fucking terrible. Um, so not only do cats, you know, do nothing, they also negatively affect society by impacting women who have them. Right. I agree, actually. Because you, you go to a girl and she has a dog. You're like, oh, my God. Like, I would love to go over there, maybe, like, <laughs> cuddle with the dog after, like, you know, we hang out and stuff, you know, but, um, <laughs> but like if I, if I see cats, bro, I'm like, okay, this is weird. Her house smells like litter. They also shed I don't bad. S- and yeah. They shed bad they and shed bad I don't and see smell. the cats anywhere. They're always like hiding or like laying on a shelf. I'd rather them hide. Like I do not want to see cats. Black cats are like fucking bad luck. Don't want them. Don't need them. Get rid of them. I like that. Great answer. Um, what's something that girls can get away with only because they're a girl and why? Okay. Having giant titties. Am I wrong? <laughs> I so, so so what do you mean? So why can't a guy have giant you're titties? You're fat. Mm. You'd be fat. Like, oh, you'd be like, like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like, yo, get in the gym, bro. Like, like you shouldn't have giant titties. Oh, yeah. Have giant titties. If you're a guy that has giant titties, but you're almost it, chirped. If a girl has giant tits, everyone loves her. Good for you. She makes bank on OnlyFans. Fuck. You what can't if, have giant tits if you're a dude. No. Good point, dude. Nice answers, Abs. What about you, Change? I went with pedophilia. Wait. Hear me out. Okay. Okay, I'm hearing you. I'm going to wait. Oh, I actually do know where you're going with this. Teachers, right? Yep. We looked at them, if they were hot, as like, wow, that woman is so hot. And Like a hot teacher, you're saying? Yeah, a hot teacher. Like, yeah, like. Like if if the neighboring school has one, it's like, yo, where do we get those teachers? Yeah, or if you have one, you're like, holy cow, like this is like my dream. You just have a boner in fourth. And hour. no guy would look at a thirty year old teacher and be like, That girl, I would be pissed if that girl had sex with my classmate who was fourteen years old. <laughs> yeah. <that's a> <laughs> right? Yeah. But if it was roles reversed and there was a thirty year old male teacher having sex with a 14 year old girl that would be fucked up and multiple times where we've gone out or people have gone out we're like wow like that mom is um, that's a milf right there right if that milf was down for the interaction with a seven i'm gonna say 17 so it's not fucking weird saying like 12 or 14 (laughs) yeah but 17 year old guy and that 17-year-old pill pulled a MILF. That guy is now a legend. And no legend. one looks at that MILF as a pedophile. Chanch, that's that actually a good point. so fucking so true. So women never can thought get away that. technically with like pedophilia and guys can't, which is... I wouldn't say pedophilia. It is pedophilia. That's pedophilia. That is really? pedophilia. That's the definition. The definition of pedophilia is going for minors. Yeah, that's yeah. pedophilia. You're yeah, looked at as a pedophile. Like, yeah, you're looked at as a pedophile. I feel like if a teacher still hooks up, with a student, it's like still frowned upon, but like it's socially, frowned upon by society because of the woman judging her, but no man judges her. Is that just say more about men? I, <laughs> well, no, I don't think it. I mean, like, <laughs> because I there's a there's the there's the thing where man the man can defend himself. Yeah, actually, that's true, because, like, if a parent hears about that, they're just going to call the teacher a whore 
if it's a girl that went for a guy. But if it's a guy that went for a girl, oh, he's creepy. He's a pedophile. He's a criminal. But, like, they would just call her a whore. No, they'd probably call her those things, too. She's also probably creepy. Like, if Fuck. you're a, a grown woman is going to call that grown woman, like, that's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. But, it like, is. for the guy, for, the like, that guy, though, it's, like, he's looked at with him and his boys, like, the local legend. <laughs> there's <laughs> yeah. there's a South Park clip, <laughs> actually. Bro. There's a South Park clip, and uh, I think, like, Kyle's little brother, Ike, is, like, hooking up with the kindergarten teacher. And she's, like, a grown-ass adult, and they're, like, taking baths and shit, like, fucking. So his brother goes to the police department. It's, like, my little brother, Ike, is having sexual relations with the teacher. Or whatever, and they all freak out like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Or no, they're like, um, a teacher is having sex with a student at our school. And they all freak out. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's his name? What's his name? Well, well, no, it's a girl. It's Mrs. Blank. The kindergarten teacher? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but that's true. Like, yeah. that's, like that's, it. that's how I think that would work. Like, yeah. That's exactly how that conversation would work. Like. Shit, this really? 14, this sixteen-year-old's back in the street. Really? Yeah, and even like imagine like um imagine a single mom going up to like a younger kid and be like, "Wow, like you're so handsome." That's normal. Yeah, that is true. Versus like imagine a fucking single dad going up to a girl like that's in weird. high school and be like, "Wow, you're so pretty." That's weird. That's, that's, that's weird. fucking literally really pedophilia. Weird. That's weird. Like I don't think that that's. Fuck, man. Girls can get away with that. fucking pedophilia, dude. Yo, Chance, that's a banger clip, dude. <laughs> ah, I didn't think about that, man. It's like weird. Yeah. Like yeah the, fuck. the word makes it weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Last question here, guys. Um, Zaps, you already answered this one in one of them, but you become the commissioner of football. You get to change any rule in the sport. What are you changing and why? Okay. I, I just kind of went for a whole different kind of aspect of the game. Sure. Okay. I want to involve drinking because I think what's, <laughs> what what's more American than football? <laughs> Beer. Beer, okay? So I think it would be kind of cool if every player must crush a beer every single time before entering the field. <laughs> Yakking on the field is three points to the other team. A one-point one penalty per beer not finished for each player that enters the field. Players can strategically, strategically plan their beers. For example, you can down three beers before you go out once and you're good for the next three times. I'm not gonna lie, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I think that'd be hilarious. That's fucked. That like, is dude, fucking at, hilarious. You look at the sideline; everyone just has a beer in their hand. That's so. There'd funny. There'd be official sponsor of the NFL, like official beer. Bro, they commentate on that. It yeah. seems like Joe Burrow has finished his three beers, Mike. It's the first quarter. <laughs> it's like what? Or like the game's gonna end. It's a close game. Joe Burrow still needs to finish two yeah. beers, guys. Defensive What's he gonna end, do? Aiden Hutchinson Bro, seems the, like he has twelve just sitting there, and it's not even halftime. The NFL would just turn into a fucking league of alcoholics because you. <laughs> Could just get points for not yakking and downing many as many beers and just not have to play football anymore. As the resistance goes up, the numbers go up too. You have to down two before you go up to the field wow. every time. <laughs> That's hilarious. What about you, Chanch? I went more casual. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make the game a little bit more interesting for a longer period of time and be okay. able like because there's a lot of times, even you know, college games where we watch until half and it's a and, then you dip. and then you dip. And there's really never a chance for a comeback late in the game when it's like a two score game, yeah. right? Two score game. It's like game is basically over. There's no chance going to be able to drive the field, get an onside kick and then drive it again. Yeah. First of all, onside kicks are like nearly impossible. Nearly so I want to make it a way for the game to be interesting in the fourth quarter where a comeback is very possible by introducing not only the two point conversion, but a three point and a four point conversion where you just have to do it from Go back five, more five yards. yards and 10 yards versus the two yard line. I like two that. Yard, two point conversion is done. That's a lot better of an idea. Because the a 10 score game, a 10, nine and 10 point game is a two score game now. Yeah. Right. But you can now make a two score game into a one score game by introducing a four point, a three point and four point conversion to tie up the game when you're down 10 damn and it's not that hard to do from the 10 but it is still like pretty hard because you only get one try from 10 yards out they know they know you need to get into the touchdown also that's a game that's a deal breaker if you don't get it like that's game changing if you don't get it so like yeah i mean you lost yeah but like teams aren't just gonna do that just to rack up points what i'm saying no exactly yeah like you know like versus just like an extra point they try to pick, pick bring it back so then maybe like it would involve more two point conversions, stuff like that. But like, realistically, for a professional kicker, that's the same. Distance. Yeah, teams would only do it 
um, teams would only do it for no it'd be, if they needed to win. Yeah, they'd only do it when yeah. they're down. And they need to win. Yeah, yeah. which I think because be cool. like the onside kicks are just like so impossible to get. Yeah, and even impossible. if you do get it, you, you have still to score. Have to go fifty yards. So like the whole excitement is getting the onside kick, and then like the small chance you get the onside, and you go down the field, and you win the game. What are we doing? And two point conversions are pretty easy to get because they're on the two. But once you get to like the five and the ten, it's like very risky. It's interesting now. Yeah. Now you have to get a first down to score. It's first and goal on the yeah. ten. First on and goal, one chance, or fourth and goal on the ten. Yeah, yeah. Bro, that's a sick idea. I like yeah. those boys. Boys, that's all my questions. Let's go. I love it. Episode fifty nine. Episode fifty nine in the books. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Comment any questions you guys have. We love talking. Um, we love talking about those questions, answering them. Comment down below. Like the video. Thank you for subscribing. If you have already, we appreciate the support. And we will see you next week at TCU for TCU Texas. A rivalry game which could potentially, you know, TCU's not doing good this year, but they could potentially upset could. a rivalry uh, a rival team season. So I do like that. It's going to be a big night game. I'm excited for it. And we'll see you next week to talk about it. Cheers. Cheers.